Hey, Debbie. How are you? Hi, Jody. Good to see you guys. Hey, Debbie, I'm glad you're here first. I need to ask you a question. Last month, we had these Heidi Swap packs of 12 stencils. Did you get yours? Did you receive yours in your packet? Um, let's see here. I am trying to get my secondary device on and it's having a momentary issue. Um, can you hear me okay, Debbie? If you can, just comment just so, so that I know you can hear me because I want to make sure everything is working. No, there. Okay. No, you did not. Okay. Well, speaking of our conversation yesterday, I found this sitting on my desk. So <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness. How did I miss how did I miss that? It must never I must never have written it down and so it never made it to your invoice. Because if it was on your invoice, I would have said where is it? And if I couldn't find the one with your name on it, then I would have just got another one um, to send to you. So if you didn't receive it, that means it wasn't on your invoice and I didn't grab another one. So um, I assume that you probably still want it. It's right. From <laughs> Margie, how did I know that was going to be the first thing out of your mouth? <laughs> Found treasures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, Debbie, I'll, st I'll stick that with the stuff. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. So how are you and Jody doing? Margie, how are you doing? <laughs> it is right in front of me, except I realized one moment ago that I, well, at six o'clock as I went to go live, I realized that I forgot to choose some paper because everything else is in here and I forgot to choose some paper. So I just ran over to the shelf and grabbed this partial paper pad that's, um, it's got enough in it to use, I think. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I'll be able to choose which ones I want. There's some pretty ones in there. So, okay, um, I'm going to, and when that was on Hot Buy, that was only $4. So I'm going to mark that, and I'll, I'll get that in for you, Debbie. <laughs> Sorry about that. Man, yeah, that's why I'm working on some new systems and processes. So when we have those crazy sales with lots of things, 13 hours, and... Um, lots of people, things won't get lost like that. Margie, not feeling the best today, but we'll watch. Didn't get his space cleared off to participate. Well, darn it. I was really hoping that you would have a chance to do that, but you know, that's okay. I'm just really glad that you're here. Really glad you're here. Hoping that we can cheer you up and, and, um, that'll override any not feeling well. So <laughs> there seems to be a lot of that going around this week. So I first need to grab some lotion. My hands are so dry. Hmm. I still have ink on my hands from last night that will not come off. <laughs> well, Margie, when you get it cleared, then you can um, rewatch this and make it and then post in the group the one that you made. And um, my intent, my plan is to do a lot more live tutorials um, as we go along. So if you've got that spot created, then um, any of the future ones that you want to do with us, you'll be able to. All right, hang on just a minute. I'm going to try to bring Glynis in here and see if this will work. Okay, Glynis, can you hear me? Hi there. I can hear okay, you real you good. Can hear my mic is working, my earphones are working. Perfect. So we check the Bluetooth. I got my display over. Oh. Yeah, okay, like the Bluetooth I know. On, on the wrong one. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I had a feeling because it didn't sound like it was picking up by Bluetooth. But okay. Um, if you can bring your camera, um, let's see, to uh to the right so that the camera so that it aims towards. Uh, just needs to slide a little towards you. Okay, now down. Whoops, whoops, a oh, little too far. Okay, um, that's the, it's perfectly centered. If you can take it down a little, which means go to your left, down. Yep, yep, yep. 
So, because I know I realize the camera, if I was standing up to your side on the, your left, that's where I'd be standing. Mm -hmm. And so if I nodded down, yeah. Okay, perfect. You are so, perfect. Let's see okay. what we got here. Then I won't touch it. There we go. Okay, can you see it now? Okay, Debbie and Jody and um, um, Mark I, here. Are you I'm there, Margie, Debbie, um, Jody, yeah, Jody is with Debbie. They're watching together. They're gonna they're gonna craft along together. So, um, Glennis, can you see the picture? Ah, uh, okay. Can can you see the picture? Okay, my picture or your picture? I can see YouTube. Yeah, I can see okay. YouTube fine. Okay. Can do you see? Can you aim your camera down just a little I bit? See, I can't see. I. I can't see my my camera on YouTube. Okay. Well, well okay, down. Well, that better? Yes. That is better. We're getting there. Um okay, if I was standing to at your left and my head was looking, I was facing straight ahead, okay? okay? If I took the top of my head mm -hmm. and cocked it just a little bit towards you, that's what I want you to do with the camera. Hi, Gigi. Okay. Now, okay, if I took that one? if I took my whole I head, if I took my whole head and left it straight up and down, but I turned my face towards you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And now I put my, my problem chin. Is the, is, my problem is is oh. the like the light is okay. Not. That's okay. We just, I'll say it and we wait until you get it and we hear it and then we'd go slow because if you keep trying to, you know, to second guess what I say and then I keep trying to change what you're doing, it will never get it. That's Hi, good. Diamond. Right there. Hi, Candy. Hey, Nettie. Diamond. What are you, uh, who are you Hi, tonight? <laughs> I love being able to pick a different, uh, a, a different um, persona every night. Yeah. <laughs> To be tonight. <laughs> Hi, Joni. Diamond and Candy. I don't know. I like Nettie. It's just cute. It's just very, it's very vintage. Very, I don't know. I like it. I kind of like Crystal best because that was how I first met her. I know. I like Crystal too, but if she wants to be something else, then I got used to Nettie and that's just really cute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joni, how are you doing? Oh, man. It just, it's weird. It does not feel like Saturday today. It's been it's been very strange. I don't know why. Does it feel like Saturday to you guys? <laughs> um, maybe we're Hi, on, right? that kind of felt like Saturday. Hi, Don. Going to sort some things while watching. Awesome. Yay! She's gonna be netty tonight. Oh my goodness! Box. Oh, it is it is Boxer Day. <laughs> Happy Boxer Day, <laughs> Glennis. <laughs> yeah. Boxing <laughs> Day, but those of us who have boxers. Thank you, Margie. That was really, really cute. Happy Boxer Day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I even I even messaged with my Canadian friend today and forgot to say Happy Boxing Day to her. I cannot believe I did that. <laughs> we used to go on the day after Christmas, everybody would save their boxes and we'd go pile them up on their front door in front of their, in front of their door on the porch, pile them up as high as we could. So when they opened the door, all the boxes were falling everywhere. So <laughs> you bought a bunch of buttons for a dollar. Sweet. Where? Feels like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Yeah. It feels like a whole week today, doesn't it? It does feel weird. It does feel different, a little strange. All right, so y'all ready to make something tonight? Man, this might not take too long to make. We can make another one or we can do something else afterwards. So let's see. Everybody got a bottle of water? Got to make sure we're all drinking our water. I've got three drinks here. I've got my Diet Dr. Pepper. I've got a fresh bottle of ice water and I've got a hot chocolate. Dollar Tree? Ooh. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Margie. Um, hopefully the directions will be clear as mud and you'll be able to write them down. All right. Candy's ready. Glennis is ready. 
Um, okay, so let's give Nettie a chance to get her stuff. Gigi, have you got your stuff together? Okay, what you need is some cardstock. Um, I'm going to use up this six by six uh, pad, and so I will need eight. If you have eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12, two will do. You can cut out everything you need out of two. So you need that. You will need, I'll show those in just a second for those who might not have seen it yesterday. And let's get this out of the way here. You will need um, three strips of fabric. Muslin works great. Um, a thin, a, a really light cotton uh, sheet. You know, sometimes we get an old sheet and we just tear it up and use it. Sheet is awesome. Works great for this. So I always just use a white or a cream or, you know, this is a kind of a taupe colored. Um, oh, thank goodness that kind of goes with my paper that I grabbed there because I forgot to get paper out. So I just grabbed this one right now. Okay, you'll need that. You'll need some vellum or if you want to try acetate, some thin acetate, you could try for that. You will need a ribbon or a piece of um, sorry silk or something long like this to be the closure. I'm going to take this. You could use a long piece of lace, like I've got some right here. You could I have some... about a 20 second lag. It's terrible. Oh, wow. That is pretty bad. Okay. You could use a piece of lace like one of these anything long. You could use a piece of sari silk. You could use um, a ribbon, um, whatever you like there. So let's see. I didn't grab that either. I was thinking I had everything I needed in here and I realized I forgot that I didn't get the paper or the, or the ribbon. You will need some adhesive. I have uh, my Fabri-Tac handy and art glitter glue, but I think I'm probably going to use um, score tape or red line tape today. Um, you can really, you know, you can really use any adhesive on this. Any will work. And then once we get it uh, put together, you can decide if and how you want to embellish it. So this is the first prototype. There's things I like about it and there's things that I don't like about it. Um, and I put the butterfly on the front and a stamp. I guess that kind of reminds me that it's to hold stamps and open it up and you it's like an accordion and you've got the four pages with these uh, vellum pockets to hold the stamps, faux stamps that we cut out. They'll go in all of those. Um, it would be great for small fussy cut things too. If you fussy cut a lot of little elements, um, this would be great for those as well. And then on the back page, there's one there, maybe a larger one. And the back, the back also has um, two of the pages have, um, well, that is the entire back, has pockets as well. So the only thing that doesn't have pockets is the front of the front cover. So I guess you could put one there too. You could put one on the bottom, but um, pretty much trying to make as, as much use out of that as possible. Now this has four sections. And so there's three joints, three spines there. And that's where our, our uh, piece of cloth goes. You could add more if you want. What I didn't want is for it to get so long that when I'm trying to do something here, these are you know falling down and things are falling out of it. Um, I didn't want to always be chasing them around. So, but I think I, you could probably add one more uh, joint and one more set and still be pretty decent to work with there. Um, I thought about putting like all up to a certain size in on one and then the next size larger on another. So, um, you know, to separate them if you have a lot. Um, you also notice... Or did I? Did I do that? I, I guess I did them the same. Nope, I didn't. Okay. So on this first prototype, I put the ribbon on the front cover to wind around. And you can wind it as many or as few times as you like. Um, I think it's going to wind differently when it's full of stamps or, or uh, die cuts or um, fussy cuts. And the second one, 
I put the ribbon on the back to wind around this way. So you can decide whichever you like best. I think just in opening it, I like it on the back because when I go to open it, I'm holding the back and then opening the front and it's not in the way where when it's on the front, when I go to open it, it has to go with this hand to the left or it's just kind of in the way. It has to go with this hand that way. So, you know, a silly, simple thing. And probably if you're left-handed, you would prefer it on the front. And if you're right-handed, you might uh, prefer it on the, on the back for the reason. So you can kind of think about that because you can put it anywhere you want. And you know what? You don't even have to do that. You could use um, a hair bungee when it's all done and wrap a hair bungee around it. Get one of the big ones and you could probably wrap it twice as you fill it up. It might get full enough to only wrap it once. You could do a wet. Um, you could do a strip of Velcro and put um, a piece on the back that comes in and have a strip so that as it gets full and it needs to be more wide open, you have you know a place to let it be larger and larger. So you can close it any any way you close a journal. It, you know it would be you know. so. And that's the, the thing with these um, tutorials. It doesn't matter who does them. You can do them. And I always try to make it the same way they did the first time, just to get a feel for how they intended it for, for it to be. And then go off and do it whatever, you know, whatever ways you're thinking, whatever things come to your mind, uh, your own ideas, how you make it your own. So make sure you're on live chat instead of top chat. Make sure that on your picture, your little live word has a red dot beside it and somebody just came in Kathy hey Kathy yay you got the notification awesome isn't YouTube great sometimes it gives notifications and sometimes it doesn't you know another thing that I thought would be a cute closure is a button is a button put a great big button up here and put a thin thinner um, ribbon and bring it up and wind it around the button so and if the ribbon's long enough then you know, it doesn't matter how full it gets. You could um, still wind it around. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is cut our panels. I'm going to grab this one because it doesn't have the vellum on, so it's easier to see the panels. So the first thing we want to do is cut these panels. We have the four on the front, and we have the four on the back. So if you have 12 by 12 or 8.5 by 11, um, and you pick a piece and it, and it has a variety of things on it, you can choose what section do you want to be the front cover. Maybe it doesn't matter because you're going to totally embellish it anyway. That's up to you. If you're using six by six like I am to use up some of these, I'll go through here and you know, maybe pick which one. These are double-sided to pick which one I want to be the front cover. Okay, and then we're going to cut eight pieces. And these eight pieces, I'm always double in my memory just to make sure I tell you correctly. These eight pieces are going to be four by six. So we need eight pieces of four by six cardstock. That's what we'll do first. So I've got Glenn from the background. She's going to be making it along with us. Um, and if you don't have Glenn, you could leave it um, Nettie, you could leave it like this, like this one that I did, and you could wait until you uh, get some and then add those pockets. But um, I'm going to mute Glennis for, well, no, Glennis, I want you to mute so that you have the control to be able to unmute it to speak. But um, your papers uh, fluttering around are ca uh, catching, the microphone is catching them real bad. Um, so I'll let you mute because I want you to be able to jump in when you want to. So. Um, Nettie, one thing that I do is look at packaging. So last night I took out this spray to use and it came in this little acetate, um, packet box. I guess it's a box. So now what I'll do is cut this down and cut this panel here, cut that panel there, cut that panel off there and that panel off there. Okay. With that, these two are already the perfect size for one of our pockets. 
And then these here will cut in half and make two pockets really nicely. And I'll just get this sticker off. Might have to soak it a little or put some undo on it or something. Um, goo gone, whatever works. Um, but right there, I can get one, two, three, four, five, six pockets just out of that. So kind of look around at things um, like that. Also, almost everything that we get, you know, as crafters, almost all the supplies we get come in something is either usable, uh, cardboard, cardstock, or um, acetate or vellum. Isn't that crazy? They just keep giving us free supplies. Well, not really free. They charge us enough for them, right? <laughs> Okay, had to get a drink, get started here. I was trying to clean the paint off of everything I used last night, and um, I forgot about my paper cutter. These are some baby wipes that went dry, so I just keep those because I can wet them or wet the surface and then use the baby wipe to clean, and it cleans just like when it was wet. Yep, that's got a lot of spray on it from last night. So what did everybody do today on a Saturday? Lazy around, just enjoy the day after Christmas. Anybody go hit the stores or online stores or crafting or what you do? Anybody accomplish anything? I got a good nap. <laughs> I knew I was going to need it. I've been working on a scrappy journal with brown paper bags and I finished off the box that's going to go in. It's going to be for my zombie survivors to have oh, fallen nice. out of one of their pockets. It's all yeah. going to be messy and grungy. Oh, I'm cool. just going to put the, this is the box. You Hang won't see it. it for 20 seconds, but there I'm putting go. it under now. We can see it. Yep. Can oh, see okay, it good. Oh, that's yeah, so cool. That's, that's the box that it's, that, the, yeah. that's all done in brown paper bag. And then the, the journal is going to be out of brown paper bags too. Brown paper bags is perfect for zombie apocalypse. Not like I know anything about them, but you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. Grungy brown paper bags. Margie slept. I like it. I got a good nap too. Kathy clean. Oh, you're ambitious. I will say, I have to admit it, but I do have dishes in the sink. I do. I do have dishes in the sink. I took a nap with Lucy. <laughs> Doug had to go to work. Okay, so I'm taking these off and I'm just making sure that I don't have any of the little um, stuff stuck on top there. It doesn't really matter, I guess, now that I think about it, because I'll probably cut it off anyway. Because they're, oh, they're barely, yeah, maybe six and a half, so just enough to cut that little strip on the top that they do not have perforated with the, the hole in it. So pull these apart and decide what what which ones to use. You could totally make a bunch of these and use them one for fussy cuts, and one for butterflies, and one for flowers, and one for stamps, and one for other little elements and Candy. Oh yeah, today was Christmas dinner for candy. Oh, I hope I hope that your little that your um that this is relaxing to you now coming here after all day because I know you had a bunch of people here and and chunky monkey. Good. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed everybody. Had a great dinner and all these noodles turned out wonderfully, didn't they? Yeah, I we left here. I think it was one thirty. Last night, my time, which means it was 2.30, Candy's time. We are all just talking away. We didn't even notice what time it was, which is crazy. So, all right, before I start cutting, I want to decide which width of these I want. Ooh, I like those other flies. Those are kind of cool. Oh. The worst part is when you like both sides of the paper. That's cute. Those would even be cute fussy cut out. Look at that. 
I'll save that and maybe see if I don't need to use it. No, what do I want to be the front cover? And what do I want to be the back cover? Enjoyed the time together and the noodles came out. Didn't get to bed till 3 a.m. was up at 7. Yep, I believe it. That's about what I got. That's why I knew I needed an app. Um, but I suspect you didn't get a nap, Candy, did you? Uh, even though I did, I suspect you didn't get one. That's pretty. Those roses are pretty. And the other side, kind of polka dot is pretty. Let's see here. This is pretty. And you know what? Sometimes I just really hate so many choices because sometimes I my brain just does not want to make decisions. All right, so I like this one. Um, I guess it depends what I want to do on the front cover. If I make the front cover a little simpler, then I could embellish it. I bet I'll make that the back cover. That's awfully pretty. I'll make that one the front cover. Okay, so that would be... Um, Front cover. There's going to be two in between and back cover. So I'm I'm laying them out how I want them. So if you look at this, four on this side are all inside. When you fold that up, they're all inside. So these two are the same. These two are the same. They're different on every one I make. So this is the back, front cover, back cover, and then the two in between are the same. So this is going to be front cover upside down here front cover back cover I guess if that's front cover it's polka dots easy to embellish okay and then on the inside maybe on the inside let's see. Um, I like the butterflies and I like the polka dots. I'm going to do that's kind of cute. Hi, Liz. Hi, Liz. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, can you good with all the Benadryl I've had to do? <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow it'll hit you and you'll be, you'll feel total sleep deprived or the Benadryl will kick in and you will be dead to the world tomorrow. That's my prediction. <laughs> I don't know, but you know. Okay, I'm going to put the butterfly there and then I want something a little bit darker and I'll put that one and on this end. Um, what are those? What are those? They look like, oh, they're dresses. Like They look like shells. They look like umbrellas. But you see, um, on top, there's a tiny little dark thing. That's the bodice. This is the skirt, the big, <laughs> big skirt down there, tiny little bodice. Couldn't even tell that that was a but that was a dress. I like the stripe too. Okay, so on the back, I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do two the same, just like I did on that one. Let them be dots and boy. How like Mary Ann, just make up your mind. It really doesn't even matter, does it? One, two, three, four. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't because it's going to be full of stamps anyway. So you're not even going to see it. All right. Front, middle, middle, and back. All right. So now we need to cut it down to four by six. 
Yep, they're probably all done. They're all done cutting them down. Then you'll be able to chat. I might just cut the rest of these down at the same time so I can make another one. Oh, Becky! Hi, Becky. Who's playing along? How are you doing, Becky? Uh, yep, Glynis is in the background. Glynis is right there. She's making one. You can hear the paper going. <laughs> oh, I thought I had it muted. Oh, no. Um, I'll leave her. Oh, there, she, there she's muted. I was going to say I'll leave her screen on right now because I'm just cutting paper down so you can see what she's doing, too. I like the colors, the paper that she's using. Um, let's see. This to be upright. So this needs to be six, this direction. Six tall, four wide. We need eight pieces of cardstock that are six tall, four wide. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, Benadryl doesn't work too well for me. It's like taking aspirin. It does calm the itch a bit, but I have to keep busy and not scratch. Yeah, that's hard to do. And these are good, um, good pages pieces here. So here's another thought uh, for you, Nettie. If you had, if you're cutting down a piece of paper to uh, four by six and you have a strip like this, this, you could cut this down and use this as a pocket too. A pocket does not have to be acetate or vellum. It's just that way so that you can see through it a little bit, makes it a little easier, but you could certainly cut this down and make it even a little shorter and then a medium one and a tall one so that your stamps could always be sticking just above it. So you'd be able to um, see them. All right. So six tall, four wide. Becky, what did you do today? We can find out what everybody else, what everybody did today. Candy did Christmas today. I took a nap. <laughs> Fighting bronchitis still? Oh, no. So, Kathy, you're all done. You used a six by six, too, so it'd be easier. And if I were smart, I would have had that paper chosen ahead of time. Saved a lot of time. <clears throat> but once you decide, cuts pretty quickly. Oh, no. That's not good. That kind of stuff lingers on. And uh, yeah, you better stay in and protect yourself, Becky, so you don't get exposed to anything that could settle in your lungs and make things even worse. And all right, this is the gory moment. I saw a thing from CNN today that said that since January, since the end of January, one in every thousand Americans has died from COVID. That's a lot of people. Debbie, you organized your Tim Holtz? Woo! That's a big job, because I know you like Tim Holtz. I know, you were just organizing to make room for more, weren't you? <laughs> I like Tim Holtz stuff, too. I like all the metals and the leathers. Yeah, bronchitis really sucks. And it's darn cold. Gigi, are you here? Are you, do you have your stuff? Are you um, crafting along? <clears throat> Brother at Exmouth, but he, I don't have that. Sorry about Margie. I only get allergy tick like this once or twice a year. Do you have any idea what it is, Candy? What it is in the air that gives you that allergy attack? All right, time for another drink of hot cocoa. Okay, and I'm back. Um, you were commenting on my back, front and back cover. Yeah. that's Those are from the wonderful um, jelly printing directions you guys gave. Yeah. They look like gel prints. I like them. Yeah, uh, um, these are ones that I definitely wanted to keep, so this is a good way for me to keep them. Definitely. And, you know, you can gel plate on with the cardstock when you want something thicker. Like I like a, a cardstock for this. I'm going to want it to be a little bit thicker, but. Um, I have been tried it on my brown paper bag and it turned out really good. Nice. Very cool. Okay. 
So let's. Debbie, that sounds wonderful. I follow him on YouTube, but not on Facebook. <gasps> really? Oh, oh. I'm oh, love the antiques. You're pretending we'll have to watch that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> down there too. Hubby says it's just my crazy trying to escape. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Tell him, don't you worry, honey. It's never going to escape. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I want to make sure that everybody that is um, working along with us is to this point. I'm sure I was the last one, but just to make sure that you've got your eight pieces of um, cardstock uh, cut down to four by six. Yeah, I'd love to see that. We'll have to go to his YouTube. I'll have to go to his YouTube and, and um, see. Was it on his YouTube, Debbie, or just his Facebook? <clears throat> Oh, did you say Facebook? Oh, yeah, you did say on Facebook. You showed his antiques. Okay. Do you, it, is it on his YouTube or just the Facebook? Or, hmm. Well, I don't know. I follow, I must not have notifications on because I don't remember seeing anything. Yeah, because Facebook, I don't, I don't, I'm not linked to, but I will be now. Okay. All right. So thanks to Gail Agonistatelli, I usually can say it, I can't that time. I always think of him as Timmy, because she Gail calls him Timmy. Because she always calls him Timmy. Gail Agostinelli. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so the first thing we're going to deal with is the back. Um, well, which <laughs> the back, which is also the front. That's funny. Oh, that was brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so this is what I think of as the inside because it goes like that. And so this is what I think of as the outside and the back. When you close it up, it's the front cover and the back cover and the back side, which will also have pockets on it. But that's um, what I think of as the back there. So first thing we're going to deal with is the back. So lay out the four pieces that you want as your front cover. Let me go back here. Okay, let me make sure that my camera is getting all of this in. Okay. Lay out the four pieces that you want as your front cover. Your back cover. I'm waiting for YouTube to catch up here. See what kind of delay we have. Front cover, back cover, and your two inside pieces. So you want to lay those out. And I'll lay this here. This will remind us how you want to have it, how you want to have it laid out. So I want this to be my front cover that I see. And I want the this then to be the two insides. And then I want this to be the back cover that I see. Okay. So when I take that up like this, that means... Hi, Derby. Hi, Derby. When I flip it over like that to see the inside, then that means I need to flip these over. This is not the side I'm going to see. The side is going to be inside. But see the two are back to back on here. The front and back are back to back. So I need to have that so that oh boy i'm just not making any sense at all tonight i need to have <laughs> back <clears throat> i just might hi lisa change my mind hi lisa no i think i'll leave that back there okay okay so the side that i want to see is the outside like this is laying down now so that is under here because there's two back to back that's the inside and so let me show you what's going to happen here it'll make a little more sense these two are going to come together and we're going to put this little piece of fabric here and then these two are going to come together and we're going to put this little piece of fabric here now this piece of fabric only needs to be about an inch wide it needs to be six inches long. If it's a little longer, that's okay. You can trim it up after the fact. Um, it is important that it is a, th a thin 
soft, like muslin is great. Sheet is great. Um, a, real, a light cotton, a thin cotton, those are great. Now, what's really critical is that you leave it apart like, is that is that an eighth of an inch? Um, it is. That's about an eighth of an inch. Leave it apart about an eighth of an inch so that it can bend and it won't be stuck you know, out like that because there's no room for it to bend. So you should be able to kind of sort of see through here and see that I've left the paper, the, the cardstock apart about an eighth of an inch, okay? Like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna attach this with Fabri-Tac and here's what I find to be the easiest way. I'm gonna run a bead of Fabri-Tac, I'm gonna move that away. I'm gonna run a bead of Fabri-Tac down one, down just the one. This Fabri-Tac is, Got, it was new and it was so easy to squeeze and use. I thought, oh, that's awesome. And now it's gotten so thick and hard. I don't know why it does that. I feel like there's a piece of hair and I can't tell if it's hair or glue. <laughs> so is it safe to thin it up a little bit or warm it up a little bit? Like microwave it? <laughs> okay, so I'm putting some Fabri-Tac on that side. I'm just kind of spreading it around because it's going to you know, cover a good half an inch. You can see I've got a hat, like a half an inch of, of adhesive on there. All right. And then I'm going to take GG, the card, the pieces are, um, four by six. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Four by six. Then take your piece of one piece of, of your thin fabric and lay it down on there and attach that to it, um, not quite half of it, because you remember you want to leave an, about an eighth of an inch between the two. So you can see, let's see, there you can see through it when I do it like that, let me hold it up here. Okay, so you can see through it and see that um, it's attached to almost half of the fabric. Okay, and then this one's gonna go on the other side but I want to be able to see what I'm doing and leave enough space. So flip it over, flip this one over and put this time. I'm going to put the fabric tack on the fabric, not right in the center. Cause I want to leave that eighth of an inch. I'm not putting it on the paper cause I don't know exactly how far it's going to go into the paper, but I know how far it's going to go the fabric. It's going to go from the edge to about an eighth of an inch in. Oh, there's killer. <laughs> Boy, that is so... What do you guys do for thick Fabri-Tac? So, any suggestions, any ideas for me? I've never tried anything. I've never really had this big of a problem with it. Maybe because when I lived in Arizona, it was always warm. and It's cold here now. Okay, so that... Now I flip it over and I'm going to bring it in here, leave it about an eighth of an inch apart and lay it down and press that into the Fabri-Tac. And if it's a little more than an uh, eighth of an inch, that's okay. I'm going to pick it up just because I don't want it to really stick to this mat. You can feel... Um, the fabric tack a little bit through that and it doesn't matter if you see it through it like let me show you you can see it on this one doesn't matter because it will dry but also you're going to have the other piece of cardstock up against it so you actually don't see that fabric when it's all done okay so I'm going to flip these two over and I'm going to do the same thing oh I they were I flipped them back over so that I could do it on this side. All right. Did I, so let's see what size was, cardstock was four by six. Becky, be right back. Awesome. We'll be here. Put some acetone in the fabric tack. Okay. Does that work? And that's okay. It won't, it won't uh, have any negative effect on, on the adhesive itself. The acetone won't make it non-sticky. Cause you know, I know it takes fingernails off, so I'd hate for it to make, make a, a little at a time. 
pure acetone. All right. Not like fingernail polish remover then, huh? Is that pure acetone or is there something else in, added in with that? Okay, so I'm doing the same thing over on this side. Yeah, I don't know. Is fingernail polish remover um, pure acetone? Okay, now I'm going to flip it over so that I can put this one next to it. It's acetone based, but look on the bottle. Okay. I'll have to do that. I know it always says acetone on there, but I guess I never really thought about is it pure acetone or does it have other ingredients? Okay, so now I'm putting my Fabri-Tac on my second piece of fabric. So I put the first panel and the second panel together, and now I'm putting the third panel and the fourth panel together. And it's just easier to do it this way and then put these two panels together. Rather, I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just easier. So now let me put down, leaving about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so now once you get that down, Now you've got two sections. There's your four panels. You've got two sections. Now they need to come together here. And it's just easier to take two and make them into one than to keep adding one each time. And I, I don't know why. It just always seemed to work better and easier when I did it that way. So, But if it's easier to you to just add one, add one, add one, you can do that too. Okay, so I'm going to flip these back over because I'm going to add the fabric on this side. Get my fabric tack again. Oh, hi, Lucy. Lucy came in to say good night. Good night, Lucy. Love you, sweet girl. Good night. Say good night, friends. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Say good night, Doug. Good night, Doug. <laughs> good night, honey. Good night, sweetie. See you in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Oh, oh, hug from Lucy. Aw, sweetie. Good night. Go sleep well with Daddy. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Good night. Come on. Bye. Come on, Lucy. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. Oh. Yeah. I guess I should turn that over. That's why we had it turned over so we can make sure. Not putting too much of that on. Got to leave enough room for the other one. Okay. And you can see it doesn't really matter how long your your pieces of fabric are because you can trim them up when you get all done to make them just, just right at six inches. It's actually a little easier if they're slightly longer because you don't have to worry about um, being exactly on the edge or coming up short on the other end. Okay. So now I'll put the second... So yeah, Doug has to get up at 3.30 again tomorrow morning to go to work. So he's headed to bed early. Him and Lucy. Lucy took a long nap with me. I really hope she sleeps with him because he probably won't be happy if he can't get to sleep because Lucy doesn't want to sleep but wants to play. You know how boxers are. And it is boxer day. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell Doug. Happy boxing day. I'm going to have to... Message my friend Terry again. Can't believe I forgot that. Okay. So now I'm going to add this one here, leaving about an eighth of an inch in the center. Okay. That's a little crooked. Doesn't even matter because it's going to be covered up with another piece of cardstock. As long as both of them are adhered and you have the space in the center to fold, close it up that way. It doesn't really matter if this is crooked over here or how long it is um, because it will be covered. 
So this is when the glass mat is kind of nice. I should have probably just laid that one down. Okay, so that is my outside, my back, my front cover, my back cover right there. And there's my inside. But now I need the other side. So there's the back, the outside. <clears throat> now I need the inside panels that will go on here. So I've got four here and just lay them out where I'm going to put them. There's my four panels right there. I'm going to move this one over now. Bring it in a little closer. Okay, so let's just set these all off to the side a little. Did everybody get your three pieces of fabric down? I wanna make sure that, that everybody's there. And I'll put these down, but we'll, um, we'll yep, make yeah. sure that everybody's caught up. Who else making it? Oh, Gigi. What, what, what? She says she's so lost. Uh-oh. Gigi, that's on me for bad explaining. I, I can tell. I was a little discombobulated. Okay. Oh, we, we don't want you to leave, Gigi. We don't want you to unless you really feel like you need to. But we can stop for a minute and I can go back and make a little more sense out of it because I know that it was a little discombobulated when we started. Oh, you're right, Liz. Fabri-Tac is going to totally mess this up. Oh, already is. Oh, I forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. Ugh. This um, is a good point for me to mention what I'm using. It's yeah. Eileen's Fabric Fusion. It's a gel, and oh. I find it, I really, really find it sticks wonderful, and um, it's my preferred fabric glue. Really? I have some Advertisement of Advertisement over. <laughs> I do have some of that. That's interesting. I don't know why I never grab for it. Um, okay, so Candy's adding one more page, so she's got one more strip to do. Um, Gigi, Gigi, are, are you going to stick with us? If you are, if you are, you've got four panels that are going to be your outside and four panels that are going to be your inside. You know, it's been like probably eight or 10 months since I made these. And I just, I just had a moment of, of light remembering something that I did differently when I made the second one that made it a whole lot easier. And I forgot and I didn't do that. It would have made it a lot easier to follow. A lot easier to follow. Are you still here, Gigi? I don't know. I don't know if she's gone or not. Oh, I, yeah, I know her hand is so swollen today and in pain. It's okay. We've got all night. We have, we're have we in no rush, and this is not going to take that long. So if we want to stretch it out all night and go slow, we can just do that. I would just use our glitter glue. Never had any problems with it holding fabric. Yeah, you know, and this small amount of fabric, our glitter glue would be fine, too. And when I put these papers together, I'm going to use our glitter glue. All right. So, Gigi, let me go. Let's start here. Did you, did I give you enough time to get through, uh, eight four by six pieces of cardstock? Do you have that? That's true, Candy. That is very true. And when I did these others, they were single sided. I just grabbed this because it was a half a pack. And I thought I can use it up. But that's very true. If these page, if these were not double-sided pages, 
but they were single sided. So the back was white. It would make a whole lot more sense. It'd be a lot easier to follow because you would know when I'm looking at the front and when I'm looking at the back. Okay. Okay. So Gigi, do you have eight, eight pieces of cardstock? Let's start there. Okay. Perfect. It'll be easier if they're not double sided. Good idea, Candy. Good idea. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put X's on the back. Well, Gigi, you let me know if you have eight, eight pieces. Okay. Um, let's see. That is the front. You may or may not be able to see that on camera. I don't want to do it with a heavy marker because some of them it'll show through. That's a little darker. Okay, so if they're not double sided, it'll be easier. So take four of them and lay the colored, the printed side down. So you should have your white side up. Left is front or right is front. Um, left is front. Left is, this will be, and either one, at, at this point, when it's like this, either one can be the front cover. It could be like that, or it could be like that, because I haven't put pockets in. Either one could be the front cover until I put pockets in, and then it goes one direction. Hey, Heather. Good to see you. So, yeah, either one, Gigi. But put, um, so put whichever one you want to be the front cover on the left, because the front is generally on the left, working to the right, which would be the back. So here's the front, two, um, two center pieces and the back, and lay them face down. So you can see my black marks here. This is the back. What you should have up then is your white side, your white side of the cardstock. And Hi, Heather. I am sorry. I should have gotten single sided and I should have done what I did um, last time. At, when I made the first one, I did it this way. And then the second one, I tried something different and it was a whole lot easier and it would have been a lot easier to follow. So. <laughs> Candy, you got lots of good ideas. Okay, so I'm not going anywhere until I know that Gigi's got her four panels face down and is getting her fabric strip on each of them. And the only thing to remember, the only important part is that you leave about an eighth of an inch between them of fabric so that fabric has room to bend. That's all. Okay, so we're going to stop there. That'll give me time to drink some hot cocoa. Uh, Gigi, while you put those together with those fabric pieces, and then you let me know when you're ready. In fact, I even thought of going and grabbing a few pieces of Stamperia rice paper and showing you what came in. I could probably do go, that. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. I could do that while Gigi's gluing, huh? Everybody's like, Gigi, take your time. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Candy, did you add one page or two pages? If she added one more, then that's two panels because you got a front and back panel. But then your cover, your front and back are going to need to be on different sides. But I'm wondering because I'm going to, I just added an extra page um, too. Oh, yeah. If you add two of them, then oh, she added two. Yeah. She's smarter than I am. I only <laughs> added one.
Oh boy. So I went out to pick up the box that had the pieces in that I wanted to show you. Shut this door. Started carrying it down the hall and the flap on the box broke. Tore. The cardboard tore. So the box fell. <laughs> And everything went all over. <sighs> Always works that way, doesn't it? So now my nice, neat, organized box is all piled in. All right, so where are we at here? Oh, Gigi's already done. Yeah, I didn't ink these. You can. You can also do it later, but I didn't ink them. I don't think I'm going to ink them this time. Um, and they're, well, yeah, like Candy said, they're going to be filled with stamps anyway. So, yeah, Heather, I really hate when that happens. So. Okay, let's do the next step. So we can be doing that, and then I'll, I'll pull out some um, stamp here while we're, while we're doing this. So, okay, so... This is my outside, my front cover, back cover, and outside. And you can tell which is going to be the inside because the fabric is on the inside. On Gigi, yours should be the one without a pattern on it, the white one. Mine has black marks all over it. And then I'm going to take the others and I'm going to glue them down. And what I want to do is make the four by six in line with the four by six. So I'm not really worrying about lining it up with the fabric. I'm just lining up the four by six with the four by six. I put the paper with the paper. Okay. On each of those panels. And you'll put the white side in so that you've got the, the wrong side together. That way you see your print and then you see your print on both sides. Does that make sense? And so mine has the black marks, easy to see. So here's what, you know what? I'm not even going to bother with that one. Um, the paper I will put together with our glitter glue. Um, you could also use score tape and just put it around. I might even just do that. No, because of the fabric, I'll probably put some art glitter glue on the fabric. So could really use anything. You could use score tape. You could use any... Any kind of adhesive that holds paper, honestly, will work on this. So I'm going to go around here. Just get enough in there to hold them together. And then I'm going to kind of pick this up so I can see where the edge of it is. So I can get the glue over here for the other one to stick to it. I just didn't want to get it all over the middle of the fabric, that eighth of an inch that needs to be there. All right, so if I bend it right there. Now the thing about art glitter glue, once you put it together, if you have to move it around, you gotta do it fast. You literally only have a couple of seconds. And it, that's why we love it, because it adheres so well, and so fast and permanently, but on the other hand, there's no room to move it if you need to move it. Okay, so there's one. So you can see now here's, and see, even after I get it all done, I could change my mind and make the inside, the outside, the outside, the inside, because once you've got them together, they're going to look identical until you put the pockets in, and then the pockets will determine what direction it has to stay so that the pockets are upright. All right, I'm going to do this one by putting the glue on the piece that I have in my hand. And then I can just set that onto the piece below. Kathy's done. You're fast. You done with this this step here, or was that the with the um, the outside, the back? You're probably done with this step too, aren't you? 
Okay, where's my edge? Where's my edge? So Got to get that quickly before it. Yeah, see, I'm doing this, and I'm thinking, yep, the way I did the second one was a whole lot easier. If we do another one, I'll do that and show you what I figured out after the first one that I forgot now because it's been so long since I made the prototype. Oh, that isn't even together. Come on, come on, come on, move, move, move. Oh, it is stuck down and it's not in line. Man, I'm gonna try to pull it up. I'm gonna have to put down more adhesive, but yeah, see this reminds me why I did it the second way. I pulled up paper with it because it was so stuck down already. I do like it for that. That's why I like art glitter glue. Garnish that down with your fingers. You can use a bone folder. You can use the side of your scissors, the handle of your scissors, anything just to push those two together. Okay, this one's going on here. I guess the lesson is I've got so many tutorials, you know, in these these um, job ticket holders and I'm hanging up there ready to go. But some of them, it's been so long since I made them now and there hasn't been time to do them all. I guess the lesson is to do another prototype before doing the tutorial so that you can remember all the things you figured out the first time. <laughs> Unless it's something that I make all the time regularly but you know usually if you make a couple of them you may not need any more at least for a while and then maybe later you need another one for something so it's, this is not the kind of thing that you're making all the time okay let's see in English yeah, one in a million that cannot stand glue on my hands first spot I have to rush to finish to get it off <laughs> I get it Kathy I do it doesn't it doesn't bother me like that but I will immediately start pulling it off picking it off because it does bug it bugs me that I just did my fingernails <laughs> I got glue all over them uh all right, so I got one last piece I'm going to put on, and then I'll start showing you some stuff, and then I want y'all to tell me when you get to the point where you've got all four of these. You're probably all done already, because I'm usually the slow one. I'm a slow crafter, and I, I know that, and I'm okay with that, because I never, I never feel the need to rush through it. I always work slowly um, just because just because I'm doing it calmly and peacefully and um, as a relaxing thing, not something that I have to rush through and have done in five minutes or whatever period of time. So I've always been a take my time crafter, otherwise known as a slow crafter. <laughs> well, I'm all right with that. So I'm usually the last one, usually the last one done. So, okay, so if I fold that up, there's my front, my insides, my back, and my back. Go to the back. There's the back and the front. Okay. All right, so now I've got this box of things that fell all over the place. So last night we were talking about the Alice. Oh, I love the Alice stuff. It's so fun. I can't wait to make an Alice um, journal. So, oh, <laughs> thanks, Debbie. I got all thinking about what we're doing and forgot about the ribbon. The ribbon is supposed to go in the fourth one before you close it up. Oh. Oh, 
Debbie knew that. She probably did hers and is just reminding me so nicely, kindly. Oh my goodness. Let's see if that will come. It won't. Okay, if you haven't put your fourth one on, ooh, maybe it will. If you haven't put your fourth panel down on the fourth panel, then good because your ribbon's supposed to go in there. Okay, I got enough room to slide it in. I got just enough room to slide it in, I think. <laughs> what you want to do is put some adhesive, have it go in uh, at least an inch, maybe two inches. Put some adhesive down, set the ribbon down on it, then glue this panel down on top of it like this so that it comes out of there and it's glued down and then the top one's glued down on top of it and so it's on there really good and solid. So let me grab um, a piece of ribbon that I might use for this. Um, I think I can see one that I would like to use right there. Oh, now I feel like we need to make a second just so we can do it right. Because I have, I have discombobulated you all over the place. Okay, I want that piece of ribbon. Actually, I'm going to use a piece of sorry silk. I have a couple of leftover pieces. So this is a leftover piece of sorry silk that I think will match this just fine. Now I really do kind of like that as the front. I originally was going to do that as the front. But now that's upside down. So I'm going to stick with that. I did the polka dots so that I could embellish it. But I'm not even sure what I want to embellish it with. Okay, so this is too wide. I don't want it that wide. Let's see if I can snip it and tear it. It doesn't look like it's been cut on the cut straight so yeesh, yeah that's pretty old it's a vintage sorry so that is not going to tear all it did was tear off so I'm gonna cut it in half now um, Margie your job to remind me to put my needle my pin back in my jar because I forgot oh Kathy you're working on an Alice journal <laughs> don't do what she's don't do what I'm doing do your ribbon when you're supposed to do the ribbon oh goodness thank you Debbie oh. yeah I like the sorry silk I like the way it folds and might not want it that long but all right so now what I'm gonna Attempt to do, attempt to put this piece of sorry silk in here. Hopefully y'all were one page behind, one panel behind and didn't quite get that fourth one done and have still can put your sorry or your ribbon on there before you close that one up. Okay. Let's get some adhesive. Um, I'm about right in the middle. Okay. it off right there. I'm trying to keep my finger in here. That's going to totally go together. But I want this one in here. Okay. 
Well, that worked because sari silk is very thin and this opened just enough to put it in. But if it wasn't sari silk, actually a thin ribbon would work okay. It is a little bit um, bumpy because the end is probably uh, wadded a little bit, but, but that's okay. All right. So yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Don't get me all excited about Stamperia and then I forget to tell you the stamp. <laughs> I'm going to use one of the wide hair bands. Yeah. Um, and that's another, you know, you can not put that on there and then just close it with those wide hair bands, you know, put that around it. I am going to, there's that little tiny scissor I had here. I think I took it out and left it out. I think I one by one carried all my scissors out there. All right, I'm gonna clean up. See, I'm off here. I'm really off tonight, guys. I'm really off tonight. I'm just gonna clean up the fabric. It doesn't cut as easily if there's adhesive on it. Let's see. If you fold it so you can put your panels exactly together, it's a little easier to cut. All right, did I get them all? I think I did get them all. Okay, let's clean this up a bit. Okay, so let's get everybody to that spot where you've got uh, front and back panels all adhered onto the fabric. You've got room for the fabric to bend to close. You've got your ribbon or your uh, sari silk or your lace closure that you're going to put around. I don't know how long it'll be, so I'm just going to leave it like that until I'm ready. And um, Or you've decided to close it with um, a hairband or uh, a piece of elastic or something around the outside. So let's get everybody to that spot. And when you're to that spot, let me know, because I don't want to go on. And I don't want to go on until we're all at that spot. But we were talking about Alice. Hey, Mousy. How are you? Good to see you. So Margie was saying last night that she has the Stamperia Alice um, paper and a six by six and a 12 by 12. Well, here is the eight by eight. And you know what? Hi, Christy. Hi, Christy. Hi, Hi, see you both. There's Glennis behind the scenes there. I'm going to go double for a second. Glennis, want to see what you're doing? You got yours together? Okay. Yes, I have. Awesome. So is your card stock or is yours... Um, uh, regular paper that you did. I I used a heavy paper. It's not quite a cardstock, but it's it's a lot heavier than normal. Okay. That you had so that when they're when I have the two pieces together, it's quite firm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Then that's all. I've you got need. my my ribbon in. That's all we need. Oh yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So let me show you this. This is. Oh, don't worry about it, Christy. We're just glad you're here. We know there's lots of stuff going on at Christmas or, or not. <laughs> this is the 8x8 eight eight Alice um, pad. And wow, I would like this one. I would cut these and use these as um, tags or tuck spots or tickets. Even these cute little tiny cards. And the back of that is really pretty too. 
Okay, we've got a horrible glare right there. Let's see if I can get rid of that. My table is gradually falling over. Is that better? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. is that better on the glare there? He's a little easier to see. This is really cute. A long tail. So that her idea of tail was something like this. Here he said to a mouse that he met in the house. And it tells the story all the way down here. Down underground. That is cute. So let me just whip through. Oh, the back is the back of all. Nope. The back of um, some, the back of two is like that. This is kind of cool because there's things that you could cut off and use. Um, and you could use this as a page or as a um, journal card or something. But there's room in here to journal on already. I like that. I like that. Oh, that's cute. Oh, look at these cards. Look at these cute cards here. Those are cute. Am I close enough that you can see? Can you guys actually? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can see now, huh? <clears throat> Margie has a set of 12 AT ATCs started with this pad. Nice. Okay, so you've got 8x8, eight eight, not 6x6, six six, because this is the one you've got. Oh, look at the back of the cards. Sweet. Okay, Alice's Adventure in Wonderland. Usually, the back of the cards are just plain or you know, like the back of the piece of paper. That's kind of cool. They actually look like the back of cards. Look at that. There's tags and tuck spots and tags and labels. Oh, okay. So the one that I thought was a tuck spot is actually a postcard. There's the <laughs> postcard. It's always tea time. We're all mad here. Yeah, Margie, this fits, doesn't it? We're all mad here. <laughs> That's cute. And the back, the back is cute too. Oh, I like these cards. Oh, those teapots are really sweet. Yeah, those teapots are pretty neat. They're all vintage type. This is a gorgeous like pack. that page. So, Mousy, I let a secret out of the bag last night. Some of you weren't here. Um, that I have um, set up a relationship with Stamperia. So we are starting in January, going to have Stamperia products um, at a discount because we all love them. They're beautiful, but who wants to pay retail on them? Wow. Okay, so that's the eight. This is oh, not done yet. That's a cute page. Is that cupcake up there, Margie? That's cute with the cards. The backs of the cards. So that's the eight by eight pack. There's also a twelve by twelve pack. Um, but okay, I'm just going to show you a few things. But oh, everybody, tell us when you get to this point because I want everybody to be at this point before we move on. Okay, so Gigi's there. I'm done. Glennis is there. One of the things that I love about Stamperia is the rice paper. Doug is going to get mad at you having a relationship with Stamperia. <laughs> oh, he'll just have to deal with it. Derby's done. <laughs> Derby's done. Candy's done. Candy's done. So... If you didn't know, Stamperia has two different sizes of rice paper. The standard, that is eight and a half by 11, that we're all, that we've all seen and are used to. That's really pretty. Pretty lady, this matches some of the napkins that we have. <laughs> and I think there's another one. Let me just show you a few of these. I know I can't show them all to you because it would take forever, but look at this. How fun is this? I've got so many ideas already. I've got to have some creative time to get some things made to show you what I'm going to do with some of the rice paper. I love some of these. Look at these nature ones, and they're already... 
um, section for uh, postcards or uh, tuck spots or tags. Those are really cute. I think somebody mentioned this one last night. Might have been Judy, who's not here tonight. But this one is really pretty with the dress form and all the roses. Yeah, it's on the QT. Nobody knows this until January. I just can't hold a secret from you guys. <laughs> I love that one too, Mousy. That is really pretty. Here's a, this one is Let the Sea Set You Free. And there's a couple that are all about the sea. And they're like the sea and steampunk all mixed together. And I did get, um, I did get all of those because I think they'll go together really nicely. It's really pretty. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here's one that goes with that. So here's the second size. The second size is almost, let's see. Got to see how. The second size is like almost 12, almost 12 by 17. It's not quite two times the eight and a half by 11, but it's like 12 by 17 and it's large. I love it because you can cut it apart and do so many different things with it. I mean, one piece can do a lot of different things. So this is all about the sea. Let the sea set you free. There's Pier 9. There's the sea and rust and industrial. Lots of cool sea stuff. Lots of steampunk. Lots of rusty industrial stuff. Like that one. This one also goes kind of with the sea. It's not exactly the same as that, so they're not meant to go together, but it's just a, a you know, the sea. History of the whale. I'm trying to make just do this without getting that glare. Let's see here. Oh my goodness, that is gonna drive me crazy. How can I show you without the glare? There we go. I think maybe that's working. Yeah, one of their in these in these plastic sleeves the glare is so bad when we show them and when we start looking at them in january and forevermore um i will always pull one out and have a pack of one of each out um that we'll look at without having to always deal with this uh plastic glare oh that um the dress form that you loved this one I think is really pretty with that dress form that you loved. You can see the stitching around it. It looks a lot like the faux stitching stamps. Really pretty. It looks like vintage wallpaper all peeling up. There's music ones. I got some music themes. All vintage music. When words leave off, music begins. That's a cool one. I just love how big those are. Want your steampunk in the giant? There's nothing like a dream to create the future. This is a, this is an awesome steampunk one. It's like it's a giant ledger because look at the holes over here. Like they are the book, the notebook holes and the train and all the parts and pieces. Good night, Heather. Hi, Ivy. Yeah, Debbie saved the day on the ribbon. <laughs> oh, I love the music one. Um, there's a ton of them. Um, 
Here's another one. This one is Marie Antoinette. And there's six, I think six or 10 or 12, I don't know, papers in this one large bag. Each, each paper is individually wrapped, as you know, and then they're all together in this larger bag. And so when you look at her, you don't always get a crisp outline because there's papers underneath it. But there's Marie Antoinette. There's different parts of her dress to use separately. Heck, you don't have to, nobody would even know that's a dress if you just use it as, as itself. It's, that's really pretty. Um, there's some good botanicals. Oh, there's lots of good steampunk. You know how they are for steampunk. Lots of good steampunk. But here's great botanicals. Loved this one. That was a really cool one. Yeah, that light is just killing us with the glare on there. Um, some more steampunk. Here's a steampunk in the form of um, newspaper. So you know how they have the themes. This one is the traveler. Goes along with the paper packs that are the traveler. Lady Vagabond, I think, was one of the most recent ones. I love that one. <clears throat> some more steampunk. Um, I wanted to pull out... Okay, so they're not all steampunk. Check out this one. This is just like a really super pretty, I mean really pretty, um, vintage wallpaper. Really gorgeous. And pretty birds and the nest. Love that. Love that. Okay, if you like the dress form, there's another one that goes with it that I love. And speaking of pretty botanicals, Here's some really gorgeous botanicals. Look at that. Love that one. Really pretty. The flowers are beautiful. Aren't they? They're, they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, oh. They're so bright and clear. Glenis, look at this. Mm -hmm. There's the Oriental, what's it called? I want, I want. Yeah, there's the Oriental. Oriental Garden. Oriental Garden. There's the paper pack and the rice paper. There's the rice paper. Oh, another Guinness. Look how cute this guy is. Oh, whoa, 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 I need that. Oh, Isn't he's gorgeous. That Isn't that adorable? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I know. I thought that was so cute. And here's another one. Look at the little polar bear on mom's back. That is so cute. <laughs> oh, that would be good in any winter one. Yeah. What a great background. The color's amazing. All it's the blues and white. Yeah, the blues and, and the browns. Oh, I, I need those all three of those. Okay, here's some more with the Oriental Garden. Oh. Putting together, I've got some Asian journal kits that we'll have in January because um, I'm working on Asian journal for myself. And so those oriental ones are going to be really cool in there. Some more botanical. Oh, look at that. Oh, is that sweet? Nice purple. Yeah, look at this next Oh, one. the poppies. Yay. Yeah, love poppies. Gorgeous. The world of reality has its limits, but the world of imagination is boundless. I thought this was just precious too, this ballerina. If anybody's doing a dance or a music oh. one to make something special for somebody who is 
um, a dancer or musician. Or a young girl. Yeah, that was very precious. Um, <clears throat> oh, gosh, it just... Um, <laughs> yes. There's just so many things, so many things. It's so fun. Well, she's There's not selling them tonight, Kathy, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm doing is showing you a little sneak peek tonight. Um, and this is only a handful of them. Okay, so with the Alice in Wonderland, there is some rice paper. Night, Gigi. Good night, Gigi. I hope you feel better tomorrow, Gigi. All right, here's a botanical coming up that I love. And I can see that this top one got folded. Well, I'll take that out. I'll, that'll be mine. I'll keep it anyway. So, but isn't this cool? They're all ready in squares to cut. Yeah. Do cool botanical things. They're so pretty. Um, and remember those teapots? Mm hmm That were in the paper pack? Oh, get them by themselves. Here what you're at up above the world you fly like a tea tray in the sky <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the paper with all the tea pots oh um, i love these these basic ones with script and the vintage writing utensils these are some of my favorites i see i think it's anything at all from stamperia are you only going to have rice paper right now? How much does it? Um, I, anything, anything from Stamperia. And I just, um, I don't know if you were were here already and heard. I, I don't know if you were here last night and heard Ivy when I told everybody that I um, I now have a relationship with Stamperia so that we can get anything that we want. So if there's something from Stamperia that you've been wanting or something specific um, cause obviously I can't order and stock everything they have at the same time, but sure you can, <laughs> I would like to happy, <laughs> to, uh, happy to order anything in particular that you have been wanting. Look at these roses. This is pretty. Um, we'll, we'll do it, you know, um, oh, it's like so different things each month. Anemone. Those are pretty. Uh, we'll do different things every month, but if there's things that or something that you've been wanting to get, um, uh, and this order Ivy just came in, the I love the clocks too, Christy. This order just came in the day before Christmas, so I just literally opened the box so I could ooh and ah, and this is the first time I'm taking everything out of the box. I don't have their the prices on on anything at all yet um i wasn't even going to do any of this until i had all that set in january but you know i can't stand it have it and not show it to you guys so <laughs> i gotta share it with my friends um they have retail which is what we usually buy it at wherever you know the retail outlets and then they have a Me too, price, mostly. price that they don't want us to sell it below um you know, I don't have any of that. I know it's all in the paperwork that they've sent me, but I haven't even had a chance to dig into it and look at it yet. But if I can't get it to you um, lower than retail, then it's not worth my time to do it. My goal is to bring it lower than retail so that you don't have to pay um, retail price to get it. That's, that's my bottom line. So, I mean, okay. Every one of these is, a, oh, talking about clocks. I love the clocks too. Um, every one of these is a different one. There are no duplicates on any of these. On <laughs> uh, um, Oh, there's a lot of ocean ones too that I thought Ivy would really like. And maybe you already have them. Like this one right here. That's a cool one. With the oh, ocean. cool. Yeah. yeah. And even just, I love this one with the, the bike, the vintage bike. And there's some good um, Paris ones. Here's London and Paris right here. 
just, oh, and I love the botanicals. There's just so many. I mean, none of those are duplicates. Each one of these is a different, different one. Um, there's another good ocean one. I might like, oh, look at these birdhouses. Look how cute that is. Oh, look. <gasps> okay. Okay. There's the birdhouses. Look at these little hats and handbags. Luggage. Aren't those precious? They're all just, they're so fun to look at. Yeah, there's, uh, we'll have, I'm, I'm not going to pull all of this out at the same time um, in any month. So that's why I said, if there's something in particular that you want, like there's several of you, uh, Ivy, you're one that I thought, might really like this mechanical sea world. Um, and you might already have it. I don't know. I mean, some of you have already already been purchasing Stamperia, so you might already have it, but it's a really cool, this is the paper pack. And then there's the rice paper that goes with it. Um, and then the Alice, I know a lot of people like the, the Alice. Here's the 12 by 12. We already looked at the eight by eight. Another one that I really like um, is the music the music one, and then the travel um, around the world. So yeah, we're not going to look at every single one every month, but we'll highlight um, a few each month. And that's why I said, if there's something in particular that you want, that you've seen that you want, or you, you know, see retail somewhere, then just, you could just got to let me know. And um, I could get it in if you, and you know, we can do that the next month or if we're not going to be able to do that for a couple months, I'll, I'll order it for you. I'm happy to do that. And then, um, order enough for everybody else for, you know, the upcoming month, whenever we get to that. Sorry about all the crinkly sound with these bags. When we actually bring them out, we won't have all of that. I'll take them out. It's, it's to me, that's really distracting all that paper, but isn't that cool? It's so fun. Oh, you and me both, Mousy. Total drool, bi dro drool bib. Yeah. I was just like oohing and on all over, all over the place. But even Doug, I was showing Doug some of the, some of the paper and some of the rice paper and even Doug was going, Ooh, that's really cool. <laughs> so, you know, it is. I uh, do have the industrial ocean. Yes. I thought you might. Uh, if I have to come and go, I do apologize. My son is autistic and is starting. A new oh, right. Oh, you need to make, yeah, you make, do whatever you need to do with him. You make sure he's okay. Uh, focusing um, a little too much and some prayers. Absolutely. Anytime, Christy, you, all you have to do is ask. We will, we will pray. We want make, to make sure that he has all the support behind him that he can possibly get. And um, we know lots of autistic people, so we totally understand. All right, let me move this over, and it sounds like everybody is caught up. Not that there's that much left to do, but maybe I'll do part of a second one here and then show you what, what I did differently. Hi, Laura. All right, I need to get some water. And that's what we're doing, Laura. Um, we have done um, part of it, most of it. Uh, we've not completed it yet. We just stopped to um, ogle some Stamperia paper <laughs> for a while. <laughs> and so now let's finish it. Um, but I do have some extra paper sitting here. And as soon as we finish this, I'm going to show you what I did the first time that made it a whole lot easier. Now, now that we've done this and I had forgotten um, some of those, just those little tips. So, okay. So now if you fold it up how you want it to be, so your um, Ribbon should be coming out of, of the back, or if you want it, it could come out of the front. Uh, my ribbon's coming out of the back, and so I know that it needs to be folded this way then. So oh, that light is really... All right. This is why next week we're not doing any sale or anything, because I've got some major changes I'm looking at making in here, and I'm going to need some time. I might even need the next week after that. But... Um, yeah, I told you what I'm going to do with the studio and going to get the lights mounted 
on the ceiling overhead. Going to get the camera mounted on the ceiling uh, so it comes down overhead and um, try to avoid some of this. That just drives me crazy. We shouldn't have that kind of glare. Boy, that's just awful. That, the glare right here is just... All right, let me try something. Is that a little bit better? A little less glare? It might be. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, we're all praying for him, Christy. What's his name? Yay, Nettie. Everybody's caught up, I think. Yeah, Christy, let us know his name. We'll definitely put prayers and positive thoughts out for him. Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks, Margie. Um, <clears throat> name is Thomas. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Yeah, we're all saying a prayer for Thomas. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, I'm still seeing. Okay, if I hold it up here, we don't have quite the same um, glare. I'm going to keep trying to make adjustments, but that's okay. Next week, I'm making these major changes. I'm hoping to take care of some of this, which so we won't have to deal with it every time. Get them in place, and they'll stay. Okay, so now we've got this this way. What we need to do now is put our vellum pockets in. So I'll get my vellum, and I just have some leftover pieces here. I'll use what... I always like to start with the smallest pieces I can and then go to bigger ones if I need to. All right, so there's our prototype. So what I did on the villain pockets in here, whoops, wrong one. <clears throat> I made the top pocket shorter, the middle pocket a little bit larger, and then the bottom pocket a little bit larger, so that um, you could put stamps of different sizes. If you have small stamps, you know, you can put them in these, the short one up here, and they don't get, you can still be able to pull them out, not totally drown in there, and a little bit larger in here, and then the largest ones down here. Uh, because if it gets down there like that and, and it's below the the top of the pocket, it's hard to get it out. So I always want to put it in one where there's at least part of it sticking out of the pocket and they can come up and cross over the, the pocket above it. That's just fine. But um, so I made them three different sizes. I do have some large ones that go in here and lots of small ones too. So the size, it's going to be four inches wide because you're cardstock is four inches wide so it's exactly edge to edge and then here's what I did on the width of them the first one is one and a quarter the middle one is one and a half and the bottom one is two inches so I've got one and a quarter one and a half and two inches so if I look at that I'm going to need one, two, three, four that are one and a quarter. Let me grab a prototype here because you can see there's four there. But then if I turn it over, there's two on the back. So I'm going to need six that are one and a quarter and six that are one and a half. And then six plus one. So seven, unless you don't want one on the back there. I always have way more stamps than I have room for, so I like that extra pocket for some big ones. Uh, so seven of the two inch. So it's basically six of each plus one extra of the largest one. So one and a quarter, one and a half, and two inches. So where's my 
paper cutter. So this is four inches wide, which is perfect. And it's almost six inches, just shy of six inches. Um, let's see, if I do one and a quarter, mm, excuse me, that's my Diet Dr. Pepper. Um, let's see. If I cut a one and a quarter and another one and a quarter, then what I have left is uh, just shy of three and a half. Um, I could do a two inch and a one and a half. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm just in my mind trying to figure out how I can get the most out of this. It's just barely shy of six inches. So if it was six, I could get two of the short one, one of the middle and one of the bottom. So I'm okay with uh, everything just being just a hair shorter than that. So I'm going to pretend like it's six inches because it's so close. I mean, it's less than an eighth of an inch, like a 16th that I'm going to go ahead and use it that way. So I'm going to go to um, one and a quarter here. That's not going to be right. All right. I'm going to have to do it this way. All right. So one and a quarter. That doesn't appear straight. Let's try this side. It doesn't appear that that was cut straight. So it's probably cut with scissors. That's one. Let's get one and a quarter. There's one and a quarter. And a second one and a quarter. And then I can get one and a half. <clears throat> And what I have left should be just about two, just shy of two. Yep. Okay. So out of that one piece of four by six, I can get two one and a quarters. Oh. And one, one and a half and one, two, two inch. That light over there is causing us a lot of a lot of glare. What if it just disappears? Is that... Okay, so if I take another uh, four by six and I'm gonna do a one and a quarter and another one and a quarter. And a one and a half. And I should be left with just about two. Yep. So that will go there. Okay. So now these pieces are a little bit larger. That is a full six by six. Okay. So I need to cut down one side to be four inches so that it will be six by four. So that one is six and I'll make this one four. But cutting off a good strip there that we can use, we cut a six to a four so we know this is two inches, right? So I've got this piece now that is six by four and I know from every six by four I can get two one and a quarters and I still need two for the back. So I'm gonna do that. And a quarter. So the bottom line, the bottom line is that, you know, because my pieces happen to be four by six, um, I'm figuring out how I can get the most out of them. But you, the bottom line is you just need six pieces that are one and a quarter by four inch and six pieces that are one and a half by four inch and seven pieces that are two by four inch. That goes, yeah, that one goes there. And these two go 
around the back side. They'll go on those two on the top. And this one is two inch. It could go right here. I just need to cut it off at four. <clears throat> I like to use the smallest pieces possible to save my vellum. That's a good square for something. <laughs> if I can catch it. Okay. So I have this last one that is six by six. <clears throat> So let's cut that down to four by six. Okay. And I have all the one and a quarters that I need because these two will go on the back two. So I still need two for the back and one right here that are one and a half. So let me do a one and a half. Oops. Didn't have a good hold of that one. Okay, and another one and a half. Good night, Kathy. Oh, Etsy shop. Yeah, that needs some work. Mine does. <coughs> Okay, so there's my three that are one and a half. Okay, so you can see that all of the front pieces are there, and I'm only laying them out so that you can see where they go. But those will go on that one, those will go on that one, those will go on that one, and those will go on that one. And then if I flip it over, Those two will go on the top. Did I? One, two, three. One, two, three. I thought there was an extra one. Okay. Those two will go on the top. That looks like a center one. That's a smaller one for the top. Those two will be the top. That's the center. There's the center. And this, I need three of the two inch ones for the bottom there. So I've got one here. <clears throat> Cut that down to four. Okay. Now I've got this one that's one and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and put it there because I probably have a lot more small stamps than I have large stamps. And that uses up all the vellum that I had right there and gets every pocket except one on the back cover. And, you know, maybe I do or do not want one on the back cover. I can always take a piece of this um, cardstock, too, and cut it and put it right back there and use that as a, as a pocket. Um, well, let's see. Maybe that's better. Um, and use that as a pocket on the back one too. Okay, so there's that one and there's that one. All right, so these are the back two pages. I flip it over. Here's the inside page. I'm not doing very well at picking those up with, I'm not sliding along this thing. What happened to my blade that I thought I just had here? Um, I'm looking for, I'm looking for another blade. It's not there. I just had a blade right here. I know I did. I know I did. Oh, there it is. Sitting right in front of me. Okay. So let me move these off to the side. So I think what I'm going to do, using wax paper because I don't have that much vellum. Yeah, only bad thing it likes to curl, so getting straight cut isn't easy. That is very true. I'll be curious to see how the wax paper holds up. Because if it does hold up, then that's a great idea. Yeah, my stamps get lost in all my other doodads too, Deborah. I have a big drawer now that is full of them and... They're, so, they're just all piled in there, so I can't find anything. Then I end up not using them. 
<clears throat> okay, so these are the two back ones. I'm going to set these aside for a minute. <clears throat> and let's deal, <clears throat> excuse me, let's deal with the inside here. We have the top, middle, and the bottom. Now, one thing to notice on the top, I didn't put it right up against the uh, top of the page because I want the stamp to be able to come up you know, over the, over the top of the vellum so that I have something to grab hold of to pull it out. So a stamp could be this tall, I'll say it's that tall, and still not be poking out of the top of the page, but poking out of the top of the vellum. So I do want to leave some room there, at about a half an inch, and then about a quarter of an inch between the next two. And the bottom one can be right up against the bottom. So because of that, the easiest order to put them down <clears throat> in is to put the bottom one first because you know the bottom one's going to go up against the bottom one is going to go against the, the bottom um, part of that cardstock okay so I'm going to on these use this red line tape this is a really skinny red line tape uh, on the one the template I used um, art glitter glue because I can get a really thin line out of that. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I would just say something that will give you a thin line if you can, because that keeps your pocket open um, as much as possible to have the most room possible to put stamps in. Because the more room the adhesive takes up, the less room there is for you. Just want to cut this end off that has been sticking up and getting all kinds of fuzzies and dust on it and may not stick as well as I need it to. So do that. Okay. I do like the red line tape because we can see it. I can see where it is because the tape is so clear. So I'm going to do this and put it right along the edge of three sides. I'm going to leave one side open. That's your top. Don't forget to leave one side open. Okay, I'm going to put it down the two sides. You might choose to put it across the bottom and then just make the two sides meet. I'm putting it down the two sides so they're as long as possible. And then, then I will bring the long piece on the bottom right up to it. Okay, so this is what I have. You would either have adhesive, uh, you know, art glitter glue or Fabri-Tac or, you know, whatever other brand, doesn't matter, they'll all work. Of going around those three sides or some score tape going around those three sides so I'm gonna go ahead and take the red line off they always have static electricity pull them off and then they always want to stick to your hands your fingers carry them around <laughs> I don't know why okay and take the third side. Okay. So now just remember which side is open. There, see, it's static electricity. Just remember which side is open. You can see the adhesive on there. So I want to put it down. I'm going to take it right to the bottom edge. So I'm going to start in that corner, the side edge, across the bottom, and up that side edge. There we go. And there's our first pocket, just like that. I was wondering if anyone else is doing acrylic besides myself. I'm using acrylic, and I'm using the score tape, and I'm finding it sticks really well. I'm Acetate? not having any problem with it at all. Okay, I'm going to go. Acetate, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, gosh. So you're using acetate instead of vellum. I'm anxious to see how that works as well, and the score tape. And the score tape is holding like it really strong. Um, 
I, uh -huh. I tested it Good. this afternoon to make sure. And it's, I'm very happy with how yeah, I'm just wondering if anybody else was, was I mean, doing no, the try and wax paper. Um, who's using Dellum? Who's using acetate? Uh, or who's using paper? Or what else are you trying? Anybody trying anything else? Always curious to see how they all work. So meanwhile, we can just chat amongst ourselves and we'll continue to. Uh, yeah, making a gusset there would yeah, be a good idea. Yeah, that is true. That is true especially for the amount of stamps I have. I guess it would probably be a great idea. Yeah, I think these would be great for if, if you do fussy cut, like Glenna's fussy cuts out a lot, and maybe you have a lot of little tiny things that you um, fussy cut out. You know, butterfly. I keep those in individual envelopes inside each file because I have file folders for every and subject I and things like that. You could have one for butterflies and one for flowers. And that. Debbie, are you using the score tape or what adhesive are you using? It's a piece of tape sticky side up something on the side of your table when you take out the back. Oh, Margie, you're so smart. You're so smart. Okay, Debbie's using tracing paper. And going to make a gusset. Awesome. I can't wait to see how that turns out, the gusset. And how the tracing paper holds up. I'm always curious as to how each type of paper will uh, last. You know, if some will be better than others or if they're all equally, you know, resistant, resilient. Debbie's using acetate. <clears throat> yeah, Margie, that was smart. She said, put a piece of tape um on your desk sticky side up and then when you pull the red line off just stick it to that piece of tape and then it won't keep having static electricity and sticking to me <laughs> margie you're always so smart with the tips for me i love that keep me keep me um well tipped <laughs> She tips me with smart, brilliant trips, trips, tips that actually help. Yeah, Debbie, mine's a quarter an inch, which is I regret now because it's taking up a lot of room. But I'm going to be using mine to store alphabet letters in, so it should still be okay. All right, hang on here. So my chat has frozen. Let me get back here. So are you saying, you know, not that it was a quarter inch thick. Oh, you're talking about quarter inch tape, right? The tape. Yes, mine's a quarter inch, so it, it takes quite a bit of room. Yep. I, but that was all I had. At the, yeah. I wish I'd use an eighth now. but This one's about an eighth of an inch, and that's about as wide as I would I, I really like how it, it's holding it very, yeah. very strong. I'm not having any problem with them trying to come up or anything. Cool. In fact, I wonder if I put that one on. No, I didn't put it in upside down. But it's mm -hmm. holding it. I'm not going to be a problem with that. Good. And I'm making mine all the same size because they're all for letters. Oh, right. Right. Not for stamps of different sizes. Um, yeah, I like to use the smallest tape possible for this so that I have the most room possible for storage. Because that would give up a lot of um, a lot of pocket space with a bigger tape, a wider tape. And I didn't even think of that. And I, I, yeah. I think I this is uh, probably this tape I'm using, this red line. I think it's a 16th of an inch would be my guess. Let's see. Yep. 16th of an inch, which is awesome. So it's a, about the smallest I can, amount of space I can use up there. Oh, don't pull the whole thing up. Just the red line. Okay. Hi, Penny. How are you? My tip for the evening. If you make gussets, remember to leave a bit more of a spine so you don't end up with an alligator mouth. Yep. Yeah. If you... um. 
if you are going to make gussets, I would probably leave more than an eighth of an inch here between them for, for, cause they're going to be full. So when you go to close it, especially if it's gusseted on both sides, you might leave as much as a half an inch there. That's, that's really smart. What Becky said, Debbie's using eighth inch score tape. That's a good size. I probably wouldn't go. I don't like to go any larger than eighth inch. Because I want max, maximum use of my pockets. Okay. Now I got all these little red guys. I do have some washi tape here. I'll bet I could put some washi down. And get that red line to stick to it. Not sure what he's mine's for just creating way with the hands. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so we'll put that down there and there. There we go. Brilliant Margie. Uh, Penny, how you doing? You're doing great. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Hope you had a nice Christmas relaxing today or have you been shopping today or um cleaning today sleeping <laughs> some of us have been doing all of the above oh excuse me <clears throat> all right It was a little time consuming to have to stop after every little strip here and cut cut it off, but this red line doesn't really tear score tape, the white does. But the red line you have to cut it, it's like plastic. But um but I do like it because you can see where it is. So Glennis, did you add an extra uh panel to yours? I followed Candy's example and added two extra panels so that my cover and back would be on the same, Both be like on the proper spot on the outside. Yep, as they were to begin with. Yeah, yep. so I've got six panels. Cool. And Glennis is going to use hers to put alphabet letters in. She's already decided that ahead of time. That's why she's making her pockets all the same size because they're all going to hold all kinds of alphabet letters. I have them stored right now in a bag and I find when I'm looking for a word, it just drives me nuts. Yeah. This will be, able well, to this be great. So did you count like how many pockets there were when you put those two extra panels? And so you can put like three letters per pocket or did you well, not it just, does that make any sense? <laughs> I'll have more than I need, but I'm going to use the, the extra ones for numbers. Ah, cool. Cool. Because most of the stamp sheets you get and uh -huh. the and pads and stuff, they have numbers and, and alphabets. The letters, yep. Yeah. So I cut those all up. Ah, okay. Let's see. There's my other two. Yep, Margie, my hot cocoa is cold cocoa. It always is. I swore I was going to drink it while it was hot tonight. I can never get to it while it's hot. And it's always way hot to begin with because I like it hot, hot. I like it hotter than most people do. Dare be doing the gusset so I can get my fat fingers in. <laughs> oh, Penny Dog Sat. Wow. Yeah, I'll bet. Um, are, you, are they still there or did they go home? <laughs> did they go home already? I'll bet you're done for the day if they did. Yeah, I guess it could depend on how old they are. Man, I can't wait till Lucy's not a puppy anymore. <laughs> Puppies are exhausting. Are y'all talking about 
sticker sheets or die cuts? What sort of letters? Um, Glennis, what sort of letters are you talking about? Are you talking about sticker sheets that you're going to cut up and put in there or die cuts that you're punching out or cutting out with a die cut or buying as die cuts and putting there? Um, I just knocked over my camera. So, oops. Um, I'm, I sticker sheets that are in the back of pads or any sticker sheets I've been given with or any letters I cut out of the uh, of the magazines and I use I cut out a lot of scrapbooking magazines and they quite often have alphabet sets oh, yeah. um, so anywhere I see interesting looking letters I, I cut them and I put them in a big bag okay but I then digging through them I just go nuts yeah so are you going to store that you just brought up a curious question are you going to store like an alphabet set all in the same font together in a pocket or are you going to store no. all like a's and b's in, in a pocket i like mixing them up when i use them uh -huh. so i'll have all these in one and b's in another because i really like mixing them all up i like the yep. look okay makes sense like even yeah. finding the three for tom took me ages to get three different ones Really, it, it's hard to pick out three letters out of uh, a yeah. loose bag. Digging around. And then that night, you showed this, and it was like perfect. Oh, yay! Wow, good timing, huh? Good timing, yes. Good timing. You're like, I found my solution. Well, good. It's awesome. I like when the solution shows up at the right time. <laughs> Like you did for me many times. Oh, well, at least this time. Even the letter I gave him, you had told about doing one for, for Doug. Um, I think before you were married, you said you had made one up. Oh. And that's what I did for Tom. Yeah. That's cool. And I did it on that notebook we made, the flippy floppy thing. Yeah. So uh, he kind of... I'm going to have to do a tutorial on um, the never ending card. Yeah, I'd love to do that. That's another one that's awesome. That was the first card I ever made. Don't pick something easy, you know. No. Not <laughs> ever, wow. The first card I made for Doug. I wanted the first card I made. I mean, you know, real card card. Um, yeah. Made some, just, you know, simple, basic, whatever's, but um, I wanted the first really hard or nice card I made to be for Doug. So I made him the never ending card. That was fun. It was really cool. So yeah, we'll have to do that one really soon. I've seen them, but that might be a good live. Yeah, I think so. I I haven't made one for a couple of years. So I promise to make one first to remember all the <laughs> tricks. You know, instead of after the fact, after I've confused everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Make one first so that I can remember all the little tips and tricks. Okay, so there's my second page. This takes a while to, to get these uh, little things on. Six months and eight months are the dogs. Oh, so they are puppies, boy. And how old are yours, Penny? They're home now, but they were six and eight months. And Lucy's seven months, and she's still a very energetic puppy. So I'm sure they were. And then how old are yours? You probably had a little bit of a busy day. <laughs> I need some dogs around, unless you could put them all outside in the backyard and they just played with each other. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. That's the good part about having more than one. Lucy goes out and tries to get the chickens to play with her. They just don't want to, they just don't want to participate. Well, they one of them does through the fence. It's kind of funny. They sit there and do a back and forth thing. But um, I actually recorded it the other day. It was kind of funny. But they can't come out and run and jump and play like she wants them to. And you know, she's a very yeah. athletic dog. She, yeah, she is. She's so strong, solid muscle. Uh, we let the chickens out every day, and every day in the afternoon, we'd let them out for a few hours, and so they could just roam the yard. They have a, they have their own big yard where they are, but um, <clears throat> we'd let them into the backyard. They eat any weeds that are in the lawn, and they love to walk around and you know 
pick the bugs in the garden and things like that. But um, once we got Lucy, Lucy's like, oh, friends. And so she goes out there and starts running around with them, thinking that, oh, we're going to run and play. But all she's doing is scaring them to death. But they think she's chasing them. And she thinks she's running and oh, playing. Oh, yeah. So either they're running away, thinking, what is this thing? Or they're all running at her. And then she's like, oh, good, we're going to play. <laughs> do you get uh, eggs from them? Yep, we do. So wouldn't that disrupt the eggs then? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. I mean, a super traumatic event can disrupt the eggs, but not really. I mean, okay. that would be pretty darn bad. <clears throat> nah, they're pretty good layers. They do slow down in the winter. They do slow down when it gets cold. Lucy is a boxer, a beautiful boxer. Ah, yes. Yep, and she's seven months old a couple days ago. So she is beautiful, and she's really, really a good dog. She's responding really well to her training. When, when it's just her and me, she is so obedient, it just blows my mind. But then, you know, we get out somewhere else where there's other people or other dogs, known otherwise known as the distraction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The distraction is a little more difficult for because it's, it's just really hard for a puppy to contain themselves when they want to play or go say hi to somebody or play with another puppy and you're asking them to sit, but. I can take her to the front door and have her sit and uh, leave the door open and tell her to stay and then walk out to the car and to the mail and all of that and come back and she's still sitting, staying right where I told her to stay. That's excellent. Seven months. Yeah. So she's really doing great. Um, we didn't want her, you know, if, we, if you drop a piece of food or if we're cooking and drop something on the, on the floor, don't want her just jumping out and eating everything off the floor. So we taught her, leave it. So if something falls on the floor, leave it, unless we give her permission to eat it. So sometimes she loves apples. So every time we eat an apple, I take the core and I cut off, you know, all the little tiny pieces of good apple, you know, around the core, and feed her those. And so sometimes I'll drop one accidentally, and it falls on the floor, and she will just look at it and just just stare at it until you say okay. And then she knows she can eat it, but she won't touch it. She won't go after it. That's so great. Piece of, yeah, piece of meat or anything that's her favorite thing. Um, just say, leave it. So when she starts sniffing at my things or something out you know, in the living room or something that she's not supposed to be in, I just say, Lucy, leave it. And she just moves away from it. So she's really doing well. I'm just impressed with her age, how well she's doing with her training. Until we get around other dogs. <laughs> other dogs are essential. <laughs> and then we forget everything. <laughs> oh, man. And we have a widow neighbor across the street. And uh, every time she sees her, she just takes off running. She just loves her. She takes off running and goes to her. So... She can be listening and minding and Diana will walk out and she sees Diane and boop, she's gone. And you can yell, you can whistle because she's, you know, being whistle trained. You can whistle and it's like she doesn't even hear it. Like she's deaf. <laughs> she's just all over Diane. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But yeah, she, forget mom and dad. She doesn't hear anything. Dogs and cats both, they, they pick their people. Yeah. She just likes her. But, you know, Diane, she, she, if she jumps up on Diane, she could just knock her over. It's Diane's tiny little thing. Oh, it takes forever to put these pockets on. 
Yes. Did they tell you how to turn with distractions to break that? Um, I can't remember, Becky. <laughs> Doug uh, learned all that, and I um, just kind of pick it up as I need it. <laughs> but I but I don't know if he did or not. But, but that's the next step that I really need to do with her during the day is with the distractions. So So help me. Tell me. Hi, Judy. Selective hearing. <laughs> a selective hearing. That's a trait shared by, shared all, by all males. Yeah. Shared by all puppies, <laughs> teenagers, and males, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Becky, um, educate me on how, how I can train her to listen with the distractions. That's what I need. Got to train the people first so that they know how to train the dog. Phew. All right, I got three pages on. Jeez. This is the part. It takes as long to put these little acetate things on as it does to do the whole, whole other part, huh? Yes, I'm surprised how long it is. Yeah. Natty, you still here? And are you still working on yours? Let's see. Candy's doing hers. Derby. Okay, put her in the same situation, but her on a lead. <clears throat> when she starts to go toward the distraction, do a quick hard jerk on her lead enough to let her know that. Okay. And then what? Then do you have to need to reward her right there, so she sees a reward for turning around. So she doesn't want to turn around. She'll pull and go to try to go the other way, uh, to know that that behavior causes something she doesn't enjoy. Okay, that one seems to be taking longer. <laughs> then keep. I'm listening. I'm reading, listening. No, you snap before she takes off. Okay. All right. That way she can relate comfort to her neck with wanting to disobey. Okay, I will try that. Makes sense to me. I know there's something she does that's just because she's a puppy and she'll grow out of it. But in the training, you got to have the training. That's not just puppy. No, she won't grow out of it if she's not taught to. Yep. Do that several times, and when she stops trying to go toward the distraction, then you reward her. Easier to train cats. <laughs> you say no. They do what you want, what they want. <laughs> you say, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Margie, so true. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, see, I trained them. They're doing exactly what I said I'm okay to. It was, it's called opposite day, right? So you tell them to do what you don't want them to do. <laughs> and then they do the opposite. Uh, I don't know. Did we lose Natty? Or, or Natty, are you busy um, making your... Folio. Mm -mm, sounds like kids. 
Yeah. Uh, then there's the point that the kids become adults and then they're awesome to talk to adults to adults and they realize you're not so stupid because now they're seeing things <laughs> <laughs> my trainer trained and handled dogs in war and as police officer he's very good at what he does and explains everything to you i love it i love it Yeah, it sure helps if you understand, you know, if it's explained and you understand why, <clears throat> what and why. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting these little red things off here. So, Candy, let us know when you get. Uh, <clears throat> when you get all your pockets on. And let's see, Dare B. She's doing acetate pockets. Who else? I'm curious if Nettie's still here and just working on her pockets, trying to get through this. This is the longest. Most time consuming part. Especially when you think I haven't even done the back yet. <laughs> yeah, but there's only two panels to do on the back. For some of you. Unless you, well, yeah. <laughs> or three. <laughs> um, <laughs> unless you want to do the, you know, the back cover. But you can always add, you know, but you yeah. know what you want, you know what you want your sport and you know that you need all those pockets. How many pockets did you figure that you needed? I mean, did you say, okay, if I add these two more panels, I'll have the right amount of pockets? Yeah, because numbers, I don't care if they're jumbled. That, that's no problem because I just use them randomly anyways. Right. So alphabet letters, there's what, 26 letters of the alphabet? Yeah, and, and I figure it's like X and Y can go together in V and W. Uh-huh. Okay, so you figured you needed 13? I thought... Yeah, or, no, I was thinking 23, 24. Okay. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 6, and 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, you'll have 27, right? Yeah, 20. So I'll have. Plus, if you put. I'll have lots for numbers. Yeah, yeah, good. Oh, that'll be, yeah. That'll be a lot. That'll be good. I'll use it a lot more now than I just. Well, I didn't know what else to do. I just didn't think of doing something like this. Was, yeah. But that, I mean, this is awesome because as soon as this is done, you'll be able to fill it up tonight. Yeah. You know? Well, I'll do it before I put uh, take any pictures. Yeah. Which will be great being able to see it actually in use. Yeah. And, um, yeah. First thing you go to make tonight, tomorrow, you'll be using it already. I do have a whole that whole little drawer, one of those little clear drawers that would sit on my desk full of stamps. And there's just there's just so many in there now that um it's just hard to find anything. They're hard to find a stamp that I want because there's so many. I can't even dig through them. So it would be helpful. But I know that the amount of stamps I have, that I would need more than one of these. But I can't decide if I would want to um, divide them and organize them by, like, theme or by size or what. I mean, because it would make sense, I think, to have maybe like all botanical things in one um, in one folio. So if you're looking for it, you're going through the same one, and then maybe that's how I would do it. What other you know? Have all the subjects together. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I'm moving to the back. Oh dear. I've got <laughs> one. Well, I've only got one more page after this one. Wow. I'll be on the and and I'm usually the one that's that's the slowest and I'm always the last to finish. It's just because you did that extra page. I probably should have. I still could actually. Um, well, I kind of put those two together. Well, so. That's a really good idea, Derby. Wow. Need about thirty of these for stamps. Yeah. Um, oh, let me go back here. Okay, it's like a person that touches a hot stove. They know the next time they're next to that hot stove, what will happen if they touch it? Oh, yeah, that's a good point, Becky. I guess I'll have to watch the reruns, Judy. Are you making it along with us, Judy? Or are you thinking you'll go back and make it, maybe watch it again? Derby, you still be working when you wake up. <laughs> you tried using a pokey tool to remove the tape, Marion. You, yeah, Penny, you're right. It is so much easier. And I just haven't turned around and pulled one out of the, <laughs> the pokey jumper. Ah, <laughs> uh, not happening tonight since there's seven panels. Seven month long haired chihuahua who's just not as trained as yours. He's a true puppy still. Oh. They are at seven months, and Lucy is so big. She's over 40 pounds now, and she is solid muscle. She's strong. We play tug-of-war. She's going to win. There is no doubt about that. I can hold on for a while, but, but she will always win. So, I mean, she has to be, um, we, she has to be trained because, you know, if she was just running rampant, um, as strong as she is, that could be problem, but she we does have a lab too, Judy. Oh. We've actually had them for ten years now. Wow. Oh, Candy, you're cutting quarter tape in half and eighth. Oh, definitely would make stronger and a thumb hole. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. That's a good idea, Derby. I've been sorted by theme in a larger binder, but some of them I want to do by color. <laughs> we got our lab at the pound, and he's almost turned it off very intelligent. Wow. There's such loves. Yeah, we had when we first when we got married, um, I had three cats, Doug had three dogs. <laughs> and it was a zoo. But um he had just gotten this um, black lab. From somebody beautiful black lab I don't remember they couldn't keep it or something but he was whistle trained and so highly trained and so um, Doug also had a boxer and he would keep up the whistle training with Mitch and as he was doing that the boxer would run alongside him and she learned the whistle training and became whistle trained um, you know just by running alongside him Picked it up so easily and so quickly. All right, Penny, I am reaching for one of those. I just can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, they do train easily and quickly. I mean, they're because they're so they're such intelligent. Uh, so that's helpful. Yeah, a pokey tool is a whole lot easier than <laughs> just fingernails, but. Sometimes it just like why don't you turn around and put the pokey to an item? No, I'm just not. <laughs> and then I'll keep poking through the tape and the <laughs> through the, the plastic and the tape, or whatever that is, the liner and the tape. Uh. Oh, my goodness. No yawning, no yawning. Today just didn't feel like Saturday. It's weird. I don't know what it felt like, but it didn't feel like Saturday. I, I kind of kept feeling like it was Monday because I don't know. I don't know why. Okay, there's one. <clears throat> I 
just um now I'm just confusing myself. Hmm. You just have to be in tune with them. Yeah. Yeah, critters are smarter, smarter than most people think. It's true. Once in a while, you get one that is dumb as dirt, and you just have to love them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, it's true, Margie, because people think that chickens are just dumb. They ch think chickens are just stupid animals. But I'm telling you that chickens are really smart, and chickens can be trained. When I was 14, I had a pet chicken in Victoria, and yeah. he followed me around everywhere, and he was the smartest chicken in the world. Oh, he was a rooster. It, it, it was a girl. But yeah, it was a she. We thought he was a boy, so we named him Willie. That <laughs> turned out to be a she. So we always kept the name Willie, and I always think of him as he. <laughs> uh, Beautiful little chicken. Yeah. Probably couldn't have a pet one now in Victoria, but we could back then. Chickens are really smart. They they actually um, are quite intelligent. They're very observant, and um, they can be trained. They can yeah. be trained. She'd follow me down the block to the drugstore, and then we just wait outside. And I trusted her, and I would go in and get what I needed. And she'd follow me back home. Cute, hey, Margie. <laughs> Uh, chickens are tasty too. <laughs> they are. I had chicken soup again today. So good. So good. Ah. Getting a big old pile of little red pieces over here. <laughs> That doesn't work as well when there's another piece there that it's sitting against. Oops. Margie, my piece of tape is full, so they're sticking to me again. <laughs> <laughs> guinea pigs. Oh, I had guinea pigs growing up. I raised guinea pigs and rabbits growing up. Guinea pigs are great. My little fluffy. That was her name. And they taste like chicken, Margie. Kidding, I don't know. I don't know what guinea pig tastes like. I never ate one. Hi, Maribel. Need another beer. Hi, Maribel. We have two chickens. One of them we thought was a rooster until we found an egg. <laughs> now she keeps her name Navy. Cute. The other one's Pepsi. They feed us two eggs a day. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Chickens are fun because um, they can be super friendly, especially, I mean, if you raise them from the time they're tiny after they're hatched and you handle them regularly. Um, we had one, <clears throat> we had one that uh, we, we named her D. We called her D after Doug, D for Doug, um, because she took the Doug. And she, she would ride around on his shoulder. She just wanted to sit on his shoulder all the time and ride around. And, um, yeah, she just loved him. <laughs> and even as an old lady, she still would sit on his shoulder and ride around. Only him. Nobody else could do that. And then we had another one that we named M or Emmy for M for Marianne because she took to me and 
she wanted me to carry her around like a baby in my arm all day long. <laughs> She'd be perfectly happy if I'd carry her around. She could just hang her head over my arm and just watch what was going on in the world. And she just loved that. It's just funny. Yeah, Willie really loved just cuddling up with me and being carried, like cuddled in the crook of your arm. And just she would yeah. sit subtle in there and she was great that way. But they totally have personalities. They're each one is different, just like other animals. And um personalities and feelings and they're trainable. We have some, we have a few that just love to talk to us. And we'll go out there and they'll just follow us around and just start talking. And we respond to them by making the same sounds that they're making. We don't know what we're saying, but making the same sounds. And they will just keep talking and talking, let us respond, and then talk and talk and talk. And they just love it. It's like they're having a conversation. We have no idea what we're talking about, but they're cute. I flipped my book over. Um, Nettie, uh, we're, what we're doing is putting the pockets on. So you need to put the pockets on the front and the back. So the front has, uh, let me go back here, all four panels on the front. Each one has the three pockets. And then on the back, only the center two have three pockets because then you have your front and back cover. On the back cover, you can put one pocket if you want, like that. So that's what we're doing now is just putting the pockets on front and back or, you know, wherever wherever you are. Um, I think for the first time ever, I'm not the slowest. <laughs> and that's only because they've got more pockets than I do because they added some extra. <laughs> so um, do you have something that you are going to try and use it as pockets? Or you can use paper or wax paper. Um, did you find some acetate or something like that? Or what? Do All you the acetate that I'm using, Nettie, is strictly from packaging. I've been putting it yeah. in a big bag, and that's that's what I'm using. Yeah, acetate. I I don't think I've ever purchased acetate because, well, except like big sheets that have designs on them. Oh, yeah, that's different, though. Yeah, it is. But, like, little pieces or, or um, things that we could cut up and use as stuff like this or for shaker cards, stuff like that. Um, yeah, all that always comes from packaging. Uh -huh. You're caught up. Nettie's caught up. She's done. All right. <laughs> Your turn to chat. Good for her. Finish. <laughs> uh, Margie's caught up. Nettie's caught up. <laughs> Candy's still working her fingers off. Well, it's she's like, cutting all the tape in half. That's going to add a lot. It's taking a lot of time because she's got fat, fat score tape. It's quarter inch. She's making it eighth inch. If I'd known Candy, I'd have sent you one of these quarter inch tapes, but I didn't know this is what we were going to do. Well, I've never used this quarter inch, so I needed to get rid of it. Yeah. Because it is kind of, you know, it's, and it's too wide for most things I want to use. So this right. way I'm using, a, you know, a lot of it up and sure. I can. We can get, we can find something else to use it up for, too. <laughs> this is the I most mean, of it I've ever used. Yeah. If you felt like you wanted to um, use a smaller stop and use a smaller tape for your pockets, you could. And, and we'll. Uh, well, I've got a couple other, those other, actually both the other tutorials that I showed last night that, and you guys chose this one, both of those I use um, score tape. So we could use it up on those for sure. Those um, little shirts, I'm really having a problem with this one piece at both ends. It's pulling up the whole tape, not just the red line Gee. when, when i was practicing this afternoon to see how would it attach to the acetate that uh -huh. I, that would happen 
And I haven't had any problem tonight, but this afternoon I spent forever on one piece trying to get it up. Yeah, it just, it kept pulling up the whole tape, not just the red yeah, piece. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> All right. Hmm. I just tried to tear this. <laughs> really not thinking there. I've been cutting it the whole time because the red stuff doesn't tear. And I'm just not thinking about it at all. I just tried to tear it. Well, I will say, Glennis, that your sound is a lot better. Well, the headphones that he bought me, these real fancy things, depends mm -hmm. a fortune on them. They've got a built-in microphone. Mm -hmm. So I, when I talk, it goes right into the microphone. Right. And then I've got the Bluetooth to hearing you, so you haven't been garbled once tonight. Really? It's been wonderful. <laughs> yep. It's amazing what quality equipment will do for what you're trying to do. Now, if we could get that lag taken care of. It's been getting a lot better. Yeah. It's not near as, like, it's not 20 seconds anymore. It's a lot shorter. Okay. That's good. That's good. If we could get you right next to the router, I would be curious to see if it improved it anymore. If it didn't, then it, you know, obviously doesn't make any difference in the future, but I'd be curious to know if you were really close to the router. If that yeah, helped, with these new things. If that yeah. helped lag at all. But it's, it's certainly better than it was when we first started. It's not, so it's, it's pretty good. Like when you were going through the paper, you were quite a few papers ahead of what I could see. Oh, yeah. Good night, Penny. Night, Penny. Sleep well. You've probably had a very full day with all the dogs. <laughs> Ducks don't have an off switch until they want to. And then they're like little kids. They crash. Yeah. It's puppies. They they run around and run around and they fight. You know, they must feel it coming on just like babies do, like little kids do. And so they fight, fight it, and they just get all hyper to try to stay active and not go to sleep. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, boom, just out like a light. Just, Wherever they are, that's it. Yep. Yep. I was in the recliner today. Needed to take a nap. So I put the, I was sitting there working on my computer. So I put my computer to the side and I put my feet up and pulled the blanket over me. And um, so I started leaning back. And here comes Lucy. Oh, nap time. So she climbs up and lays up my legs with her head up, you know, right on my um, on my arm by my shoulder, and just laid down, went right to sleep, slept as long as I did. In fact, I I made her wake up to move because I <laughs> to get going. Yeah, she just loves to sleep on sleep on her people. Um, this is my last pocket. Wow. Well, you know what I'll do while you guys are still um, working on that, I will show you um, what I did this with the second one that I made that, that made it a little easier, a lot easier putting it together. But yeah, remember, you've got a couple more pages than I do, so. But I still um, could embellish and um, <clears throat> decide on, let's see, put a bead on the end of this. I need to decide how that's going to be. I need to embellish the front, decorate the front. 
I will ink mine too because I like the lick look of it inked. Yeah. And I think I will put a pocket on the back, but I think I'll put a pocket of um, paper. Things could be tucked into. And I'm going to use this score tape for that. I don't know how long that needs to be. Hmm. Oh, shoot. What did you do? <laughs> oh, I put the middle one down before I put the bottom one down so it doesn't fit because I put it. Yep. And then when I went to take it off, of course, my camera falls over again. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to it and then I, I don't know where my camera is looking. No idea what it sees. It's still there. Here, I'll show you what it sees. It's still there. It's right on. It's perfect. Can you see that? I wonder if that was before it fell, though. Nope. I don't know. But yeah, that's that's fine the way that is. Yep, that is perfect. Got a little glue on this in case it needs it. The delay is for you hearing me, not me hearing or seeing you. I think, okay. I think I see you pretty, pretty real time. I think I'm hearing you pretty real time. After this one, I've got two more pages to do. Okay. Oh, no, I don't know. Tomorrow, that's right. Tomorrow, you're driving to Illinois. You're going to sleep in the car all the way there. <laughs> Hopefully, you won't be driving. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny that the big ones think they're lap dogs? Yeah. Well, I, I, I figure it's because she's just still a puppy. And so she's just thinking like a puppy and wants to just crawl up and cuddle. Doesn't realize that she's huge. <laughs> but. I love that, you know, when she's at that, um, just about ready to go to sleep or that tired, you know, just barely waking up stage and, and just um, tired and cuddly and lovey. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite time. <clears throat> like they're vulnerable then. Linus, is your book four by six or is it larger? Kind of. It's Five. approximately four by six. Okay. It kind of looks larger, um, but it could just be. No, like it shouldn't look larger because I measured it with a tape measure, but then I hand cut because I mostly hand cut. I mm -hmm. have my cutter, but it's on the other side of the room, so I just hand cut. Hmm. Let's see what the tape measure says. That's funny, Candy. I totally get that, though. <laughs> it goes four and a quarter okay. by five and a half. Okay. So, yeah, it's pretty close to four by six. All right. So I've got that um <clears throat> before i embellish that i'm going to cut a couple more pages and Andy, I guess that's good when you want to sleep. You know he'll always be driving. <clears throat> Not good when, if I'm getting car sick, then I need to drive. Because driving takes away the car sick. Hi, Julie. Julie's home. 
Did you find new furniture that you were looking for, Julie? Hi, Julie. Okay, I thought I had one piece of fabric left. I did. Oh, that's good, Julie. Nice. I'm glad you finally found it. Yeah, it is exhausting, isn't it? The type of thing I don't like having to go out and do a second day. So. Ugh, yeah. To go back and look at the ones that, you know, are like your top three or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad she got it. Yeah. Okay, so let me just show you, uh, if you're going to make another one, this might make it a little bit easier. So when you, ha you have four for the front side and you have four for the back side, what I did, this, the second one that I made, um, I lined them up and, uh, as they would be. So say this was the, the back side there, and then this is the front side here, that and uh, put them together like this. And then um, I glued just this, the, this side here and then came over here so I could lift that up, but they stay together and glue the fabric down right here and then glue the rest of this down. So I glued both of those onto the fabric at the same time. So they were being glued together and to the fabric uh, at the exact same time. And it just was a whole lot easier. So then I grabbed the next two and I did the same thing there and um, glued them to each other and to the fabric at the same time. So as I completed each one, I had both sides done. Does that make sense? Might be it a little sound, It sounds like these are lined them up for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it was easier to line them up. So if you decide to do another one, you might want to try. Try that way. Oh. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> well, that's two pages. Okay, I'm gonna set these aside. Oh, where's my water? You guys drinking water? I have my glass and a rack of water right beside me. Got to remember to keep drinking water. <clears throat> it left around 10 o'clock and it's 3.09 now. Whew. Okay. So now let me think about embellishing it <clears throat> what do I want to do um, there's butterflies let's see what is here butterflies there it's, these are all pretty vintage so it's pink um, I don't know that these are the right colors so might need to Oh, except that. Look at that. That bird is really pretty on there. And <clears throat> let's see. Oh, that bird is pretty too. They're the same bird. That's why. <laughs> Just based in two opposite directions, but they're the same bird. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. It's good you like them both then. Yeah. They both, I think they both would match really, really nicely on here, but only need one. But it needs something more than just the bird. Um. 
needs like the rest of the tree. <laughs> That's what it needs. Uh, might be almost too large. Let me see what else I've got up there. What's that pack? Um, <clears throat> let me pull this over here because we also might have some cool lace or <clears throat> trim or something that would Let's see what's in here. That's pink. There's something pink. Pink lacy. Maybe I just build a cluster on the front of that. Maybe that would be pretty. These little flowers are kind of pretty. Good um, here, um, RG. I haven't had any trouble myself, and usually I do. Hmm. No, I haven't, Judy. Not getting any of that. Um. Well, you could try refreshing, Margie. Do you like these flowers, Julie? I'm gonna go into the drawer and see what other flowers I have too. But not gonna. Well, I mean, it actually does kind of store flat. It could with this flower, but um, and then it fluffs up. But let's see, I did that one. All right, I need to throw away all these red things first <laughs> before I end up with them in all the lace and <laughs> the birds and the butterflies. Forgot they were sitting here. Man, there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Three, Three little pieces for every one. Three for every little pocket. Wow. Oh, they're sticking to my hand as I'm trying to throw them away. <clears throat> mm. Debbie and Jody, how are yours coming along? Did you do extra pages? And are you using acetate or vellum? Um, curious as to how yours is looking. Julie, are you saying blue flowers with the pink flower? Are you saying blue flowers on the pink polka dot? This is really pretty. Let me see here. This guy needs to come up there. This guy would be long. But check out this trim. This trim is really pretty. <clears throat> it could go right along there. And then I could do some kind of little stamp, three stamps right there, three elegant little stamps. Um, there's a different one that's pink. That one's pretty too. Hmm. It's really a vintage pink there, though, so I want something that just does look nice with it. But, um, what else is. There's one. Of those. Um. Some blue trim. It's 
gray. It's blue gray. But that that's the wrong color pink. It's really a vintage pink. Um how about butterflies? I think I've got that's not um the one but <clears throat> <clears throat> Digging around down here. Hope that crinkling isn't driving you crazy. Uh, you both used acetate. Okay, Jody just left and said good night. Well, good night, Jody. Both used acetate. Blue on the polka dots. Pockets are different sizes. Okay, but what you have is nice color. Very bulky though. But that, um, but that's the front. Yeah, this is the front. So it could have something bulky, but it would also lay down flat if I wanted it to, but it doesn't need to. So, because I, I was originally, I mean, I kind of like it flat, not, not having bulk at all. I really like this bird on here. He's a really nice match. He's just kind of big for it. Um, what happened to the second bird? Did I put him back? There's a blue flower. That's a shiny blue. Ooh, this would be pretty. Look at this. Look at that, Julie. What do you think of that? And then maybe butterflies instead of the big old bird. But, um, there might even be another. Get this guy. What have I got? Uh, nope, he's not the right size. So there's a dragonfly. Dragonfly would be nice. Yeah, get this dragonfly up here. Here we go. Um, Some smaller. <clears throat> Let's see. Then we could put other things. We could put. Some other flowers on here too. There's a white one. Oh, that doesn't. That just doesn't work. This one might. Nope. This is too much. That's just fine on its own. Um. This is a good dragonfly. Might get some flowers along the base there. Oh, there's a good dragon probably bring in some blue. Blue and purple. <laughs> well, you say, oh yeah, that one, and I, I don't know which one because <laughs> you know how I kept thinking it was going to be Monday today. That's that's how I felt today, Julie. I know I did all day. I said to Doug a couple of times something, you know, like mentioning that it was Monday, and I, I was totally off. I don't know why I kept thinking today was Monday. Um, okay, it's two dragonfly. Maybe, yeah, so we have one dragonfly and maybe a butterfly. Um, Oh, well, I just really think of it. Do you like, here's a question. Do you like the flowers, having these flowers along the bottom, like ground cover 
the flowers or is that just too much would you rather just see the stems um today you kept thinking it's monday still <laughs> well at least you were consistent yesterday you kept thinking today was going to be monday and then today it's monday <laughs> yeah <clears throat> i don't know what it was it's... but i was doing the same thing kind of strange All right, so there's a smaller blue. There, there's a purple butterfly. Two, uh, we'll get overloaded with one color. Okay, we've got that guy that's blue and purple. Is that too much? This guy's purple, but he's really dark. So it kind of lends a different color. <clears throat> Um, what are these flowers called? I know what they are. I can't think of what they are. Who knows what these tall, these, these uh, purple and blue flowers right here. What are they? What are they called? Oh. Are they glad? Are they gladiolas? Yeah. Is that what they are? That's, That's what, what you I think they look like to me. Yeah. Okay. Gladiolas. We don't care about spelling. <laughs> yeah, gladiolas. That's what Glennis says. <laughs> so what do you think about these across the bottom, Julie, Margie, as a um, little ground cover? Or would you rather just see the stalks of the gladioli? <laughs> um, maybe that. I don't know. That, that dragonfly might be too big. But if he is, if we put him there, then I think he'd, there's no room for a butterfly, one or the other. Unless they're smaller. If they're smaller, we might be able to get one in. Oh, look at this cute little bee. If we can get this tiny little blue bee. He's a shiny blue bee. He can be right up here on the flowers. Look at that. That's cute. If you can see, that's kind of far away. How about that? Not on the bottom. Meh. <laughs> you don't like the ground cover on the bottom. That's just too much. Okay. That would leave room for a bug down there. Okay. Well, I'm conflicted as to whether this dragonfly is too big. But... Okay, hey, hang on a minute. See if we did that. <clears throat> and what if the little blue bee was over there? And what if the dragonfly was over here? There, we got you back. Yeah, if only the first time I kicked myself off, that's pretty good for me. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> okay, let me pull that up there. Okay, what do you think of that? You like the dragonfly. Okay, you don't think he's too big. Barbara thinks no, he's too big. No, I don't. Big. Those are mini clad. Mini clad. <laughs> they're a new type. Okay, so the question is, are, is this dragonfly too big? Is it okay with the tiny little bee up there? Oh, I didn't even see the bee. He's a little metallic blue bee yeah. because I think that dragonfly is big enough that there's really not room for a butterfly, um, you know, unless it's something small. So a bee was good because it was too small. Um, Barbara thinks the dragonfly is too big. Uh, smaller dragonfly. Can you Let's... move the, boo the bee away from the flower bit because I find it, it gets lost in the flowers? Yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, no, see, I like that better. What does anybody else think? So the bee is flying. Should the bee be flying towards the flower? <laughs> or just flying? I like him, I like him just going to go on like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Because he just melted right in with the flower the other way. Yeah, I agree. 
But let me see. I want to continue looking at the sizes here um, of dragonflies, and I might have a few more. That one's about this. This one's maybe a tiny bit smaller. Let's try this. But see, my, the, my problem with this one is that the color is so similar to the color of the flowers that I just think that's too much. <clears throat> I think no, that's on YouTube, he looks very different. One's very blue and one's purple. Huh. Okay, so he's got purple and blue wings and he's on his blue wings are on top of the blue flower. So you don't think that's too much? And well, on my screen, at least, it looks it looks different color. Okay, so let me show you a smaller dragonfly. Okay, guys, there's a smaller. What do you think, Barbara? Barbara th uh, didn't like the dragonfly; thought it was too large. So here's a smaller dragonfly. What do you think of that one? <clears throat> I like the last one better. Let's see. Candy agreed the dragonfly might be a little too big, but does like it. Um, Margie liked the dark one better, which I think is the biggest one. That's my favorite, biggest one. This is so, my least favorite, is this light blue one. There's the three dragonflies that I've shown so far, all up there. So, Margie, if I have it, understand you're voting for the one in the middle. Is that correct? And what do you say, Glennis? I like the one in the middle the best. Okay. Um, what about the rest of you? Candy, like the size but not the color. Move them up a little bit. Uh, Candy, I agree. Um, <clears throat> oops. Yeah, I don't like the color either, but that can always be changed too. Um, of these three, what do you guys, which which uh, which dragonfly do you like the best? Candy says the middle. Uh, or the top one. But that's the little tiny one I thought you didn't like, Margie. Oh, that's the ugly one. <laughs> ugly? He's a cute little blue dragonfly. Poor His thing. rings are weird or something, or the color. I just don't like the color. <laughs> Poor guy getting his feelings hurt. Okay. Then instead of a dragonfly, we could do a butterfly. I like the dragonfly because it's kind of sleek and, and slender, and the flowers are bulky and round, so it really I, offsets nicely. I agree. I like the dragonfly. Dare B says the big one. Candy said the big one. Everybody wants the big one. <laughs> the top one with the middle color would be, yeah, yeah. If I, you know, I could pull out the alcohol markers because that's just cardstock and color it, but I don't want to. <laughs> that's a poor baby dragon. <laughs> yeah. His wings, make him a better color so you guys will like it better. He's a little ugly. Candy's agreeing he's a little ugly. Um, all right. My, Barbara's not speaking up because she maybe doesn't agree with you guys. She might she not think it ugly. <laughs> well, I don't think he's ugly, but you know, that's all right. <laughs> what do you think? What's your opinion? <laughs> oh goodness, people. <laughs> we'll put these things away. <clears throat> it's funny. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yay. Done putting all the pockets on? Yep, so I have to put a bead on and I have to decorate the front and back. Yep. All right, so I'm going to, I was thinking maybe a piece of lace on here, too, along the front. Oh, I know. I just saw, I just saw one that I was thinking might, that might work for exactly what I'm thinking. Where did I, where did I see it? Where did I put it? I thought I put it into that jar, but I'm not. <clears throat> um, you know, I saw it just today. Let's 
set it over here. So I want to know who has projects that you've started that are sitting on your desk or you've pushed off to the side or they're in a container waiting for you to get back to them. Who has unfinished projects and what are they? That box that I was working on today with the brown paper, I started that about four weeks ago. Okay. That one for the um, zombies. Yep. I have to do the journal now. Who else has? Is that the only unfinished project you have? I made a, a fabric cloth cover with Maggie and Louise, and I don't know how to do the fabric pages, so I haven't finished that either. Okay. And that's about it. I don't like starting something until some, it's finished. Christy, only about eight of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hasn't. Don't make it too busy. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm thinking I'll just do this, but I wanted to put that piece of lace up there and just see what that looked like. But I don't, I'm not seeing it right now. It was just a very small, hey, maybe I set it up here. I remember just seeing it today, so it can't be far. Famous last words. I know it. I know it. Oh, well, that just means I wasn't supposed to use it, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, do we want to do uh, a craft along where everybody brings a project, that an unfinished project, and we just work on trying to finish that project? Graphic 45 kit every month at root. Oh man. Okay. So Debbie, <laughs> Debbie, you got plenty of kits you could grab and do a whole a whole kit. Oh, I love graphic 45 paper. That's one of my favorites. I've got some that I would love to do something with. Maybe I should, I need to see some of your projects that you do um, that those kits come with, Debbie, and see if I want to take some of my graphic 45 paper and make one of those one of those projects there I've got a bunch that I just need the right project for um do don't do resolutions but one of my goals for 2021 is finish one project a month that you've started a month okay cool yeah so well and if if once a month we did a craft along <clears throat> where we all just grabbed a project that we never quite finished and work on finishing it. And if you have several that are just, that just take a tiny little bit of, you know, whatever, like this one, all I, I just didn't put the vellum pockets on it yet. So I could add pockets and that would be finished because I'm happy with the, the embellishment, keeping that very simple. Um, you know, we might could finish a couple of them or one, but yeah, we call that, we'll just call that our, um, <clears throat> what do we call it? Our unfinished project craft along. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't make resolutions. I do set goals for myself though. And I don't necessarily only set them at the beginning of the year. I do regular evaluations. You know, it might be quarterly, might be monthly, depending on what goal I'm looking at. Um, might be yearly, and and uh, you know, figure things out and set goals that way too. <clears throat> Wanted to make a Christmas journal for myself, so why can't you make a Christmas journal in January? I mean, you know, maybe it's not quite the same. You're not feeling the same excitement about Christmas. But if you wanted to, if you still want to, if you have the Christmas paper, it's just going to sit there for another year. Can you do a Christmas, um, make a Christmas journal in January? The B journal. <clears throat> mm. I have an owl journal that I started a long time ago. Um, that's in a 
bin with all the things to go with it that I need to finish. Forgot about that. Or what if you made that Christmas journal in May or June? And so it was ready. Don't, don't wait till next year, Christmas, but make it ahead of time. Um, so it's ready way early. All right. I'm pretty sure that these are their acetate. I'm pretty sure they're acetate stickers. Let's find out. Pretty sure they are. Oh my goodness. It's going to be one of those stickers that <laughs> uh, tortuous, torturous to get the backing off. Let's see. How do I know for sure? Possible that it's not a sticker. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Margie, <laughs> make Christmas journal in January, put it away till next December, and then forget where you put it. <laughs> um, I have a solution for that that I'm going to start using. So I will know where things are. I used it before and I just haven't been. And man, it's made my life difficult not being able to find things and know where they are. So I'll share that solution with you. Um, I forget that you even made it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so Nettie, you got... Um, Got Ruby to sleep. Cool. And now you're almost done with your pockets. Then you can embellish yours. Okay, maybe this isn't a sticker. Maybe it's just acetate. I just don't want to glue it down if it's a sticker and then eventually the sticker part comes up and the backing is glued down. I really thought that's pretty thick. All right. <clears throat> um, well, I think Don't want glue to show on that. So I think I'm going to use the score tape and <clears throat> just put that down. <laughs> That's hilarious, Margie. Found it years later. Let's see if that. Oh, no, it wasn't all there. Good. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
That should pretty much hold it down, huh? These four pieces. <clears throat> Hmm. Let's see. Oh, Nettie, that's a great idea to use that pocket. <clears throat> That's a great idea. So that's, it's a double, I mean, it's a pocket. So you've got, the, once you cut that strip off, you've got a, <clears throat> um, if you cut that strip off, then basically the pocket opens up and becomes twice as, twice the size, right? I would only use one side, one thickness of it. And I think that that will be much stronger than you probably think it will be. I think that, um, um, that will last. Yeah, that will last. That's a, that was a brilliant idea. Actually, I didn't even think of it. <clears throat> That's a brilliant idea. You should tell them what you're, what you're using. That was really smart and uh, good thinking. So, you know, we said, look around and see what you have that might be acetate or something, some similar type of thing to use and she did and she came up with a brilliant idea. I still feel like that's probably a sticker. I don't know though. <clears throat> no buffering. <laughs> buffering not allowed. Okay, here's our little, our shiny little bee. Our busy little shiny little bee. Let's see. Maybe. Put some score tape across him and then on his tail. <laughs> These don't have tails. Oh, I have to cut that. Okay, so what did you use, Nettie? Forgot what it's called, probably clear divider thingy. So it's a page protector. She took a page protector and she cut off the strip on the side that has the three holes that would go into your binder. So then the page protector itself would open up, become twice the size, and use one thickness of that. Nettie, that's brilliant. I absolutely think that that's very smart. Page protectors are very strong. It might feel very flimsy, and actually it might even stretch a little bit, which is fine. Um, but they're very strong. That stuff will last. You won't have any problem with that. And I, yeah, I think that that was a great idea. <clears throat> now this guy's paper, so I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I didn't even think about that. I was thinking of things around the house where you might find some packaging. Um, didn't even think of that. Yep, you got a whole bunch of page protectors from me uh, quite a while ago. And yeah, that was... And one more brilliant use for them. Their page protectors are good for so many things. I use them to store things in. Like if you have tons and tons of something, stamps or ephemera or, you know, whatever it is, you can put those in a binder and you can store store things in a page protector. So when you open a binder, you just have to get into the page protector to get what you want. 
All right, here we go. Do we need a word? Do we need a word down here or a phrase? We might, huh? We might need a word or phrase. <clears throat> Gladiolas, but no gladioli. <laughs> um, let's see. I thought I just had a kid. I thought I did. See. Looking at a few wordy things. This up here. Oops. Comment went in twice. Wow, Julie getting a lot of buffering, huh? Yeah, try refreshing, Julie. Um, where do you get the material that you're using on your projects? So, Christy, are you talking about like this little strip here? Or are you talking about um, actual uh, pieces of fabric? that I make book covers or, uh, you know, journal covers and things like that. Tell you then how to add another page. Okay. When you come to the end here, just put another strip of fabric right there so you can add another panel and another panel. And then don't put the tie uh, in that one. If you add, see how it's folded like this? And the back, the front comes here this way and the back comes this way and they meet. That's because there's an even number of panels. So if you add one panel, the next panel is going to fold back. Your front's going to be up here, but your back's going to be back here. So that's why um, Candy and Glynis were saying add two panels, then you keep it at an even number. If you add two more panels, then the next one will fold back and up. And so you're your back and your closure will still be up front. So you can add another panel uh, just by, uh, before you seal this one up, put a piece of fabric in there. And now if you've already sealed it up, you could still add another panel. If you haven't put this on, you could um, let that uh, piece of fabric be on the outside and cover it with something, you know, cover it with something on the outside. Um, and that's okay. And then, so put one panel double-sided, a second panel double-sided, and then when you fold them, they'll fold back and forward. They'll still be together so that you have your, your closure up here where you need it close. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. The strips or pieces of fabric, you save remnants from other projects. Yes, absolutely. This is just a scrap remnant piece of um, sorry silk. This is, in fact, it was just hanging there on a little hook because it's the last, the last I have of that color, of that anything. It's the only one. Kind of sort of straighten it out. 
doesn't really need to be um yeah i actually one of the uh one of the first sales in in january we'll be doing some fabric because i have lots i've got some really cool bolts where um well we can do fat quarters so that they can work for journal covers i've also got um some fabric that um or sheets that i purchased that um i'm going to tear into strips and the strips might be like three or four inches wide maybe not let's see maybe two two to three inches wide and you could use those strips you could tear if it was three inches wide, you could tear three one inch strips out of it to use for something like this. And if it's white, a white sheet or a light colored sheet, you can color it any color you want with inks like the inks we had last night. You just put it in your splat box and spray it. <clears throat> um, or you leave it at two or three inches wide and then you can sew on it and use it as a snippet roll. Um, so I'm going to have those already. Uh, torn and like sell them in the roll so that you've got that ready to go for any of those. But I've got a lot of really cool fabric that is either on the bolt or is in fat quarters that would make beautiful um, uh, journal covers. And some fabric just has cool stuff that you could fussy cut out. But we'll be doing some fabric. And yeah, when we make the journal covers or whatever it is we're doing, just save the you know, I mean, people might think, oh, this is not much, just throw it away. Well, I cut that one in half. This is not much, but I won't throw it away because I know this will work for a whole nother closure for a book or, you know, something like that. I could cut it in half and put half on each side of a journal and use it as a journal tie closure. So, you know, one piece of, of sari silk um, can do a lot. So, um, <clears throat> next time it buffers, I'll refresh. <laughs> Strips of silk, yeah, okay. How do you know something is sorry silk if it doesn't have a tag on it saying it is? Never seen sorry silk. Well, I know this is sorry silk because of where I got it. Um, I got it with, uh, the, I got some sorry silk that, <clears throat> these are all sorry. Um, <clears throat> it had a whole bunch of different colors and they were kind of sewn, might be one little, yeah, like this, they were, they're kind of sewn together. There, you can see that right there, how that's sewn together. So those were two pieces that have been sewn together. And so they're all just sewn together. And so they just kept making one long, long, long piece. But it was like this, and then and then this one would be on it. And then at the end of that one was this one, you know. So it was just like multicolors. Um, and then I've had some others where it's ombre and it fades from one color to the next and to the next. Um, but they do all kinds of different things with them when they take the sorry apart and and they do that because then they can say it's x long and then roll it up in a skein and you know sell it to us as a, at a as a skein um and it's a lot easier to get to and then i just go into it and cut out whatever color i want at the time so um because i know that all sorry silk has a particular look and it has a particular feel once you've had some you will know you'll be able to tell the feel it's different. It's a different feel um, than most. I told Doug the other day, I need to find me a good Indian friend. So every time they get new clothes or make new clothes, they'll sell me their old sari silk um, clothes at <laughs> a cheap price because we need sari silk. Oh. <clears throat> Fabric is something that I don't have, and I'm looking to do some journal coverings. Okay, cool. Um, and Christy, if there's particular themes of journals that you would like some nice fabric for the theme, let me know, and I'll try to pull those out first. But um, 
I've got a lot, a lot of fabric and a lot of themes. I picked up, well, two of the estates that I picked up recently, the ladies were professional quilters. So that kind of tells you what I got there in fabric. And I, I bought a lot. Um, I, I didn't even go through it all. I just knew it would be good quality fabric and that it would probably be really nice. And even if it's just solid and plain and neutral, that's a great cover because sometimes you want to do a bunch of stuff on the cover and you can't do that if the fabric has a bunch of stuff on it. It just gets too busy. <clears throat> Was that Brenda Lee that sang that song? Which song? Oh, who's sorry now? No, how does it go? Oh, I yeah, I know that song, Margie. Who's sorry now? Oh, it's in the it's at the tip of my tongue, but I I don't have the I don't have the tune. Sorry, um, Dustberries live in India and sell so sorry. <laughs> um, I have found a source where I can get it, and it's not really not too bad. Um, I have to buy a whole bunch. And so I haven't done it. But I probably I think I will this year, because I'm running low. And so I, you know, I need some. And, you know, everybody, everybody probably just wants one little bundle of it. Um, there will be some people who want multiple bundles because they want different colors or something. But um, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and do that this year. Connie Francis, that's right. That's right. You sorry now. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it's expensive there. The old scarves. Yes. Yes. Scarves are great. And look at the scarf first and see if it's is it a scarf that it, that you could use as a journal cover? Would it make a cool cover? Sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes you have to have another fabric underneath it as a liner. Um, sometimes they just don't make good journal covers, but if you cut it up, it makes great embellishments. And so then don't cut it until you go to use it. So you can cut exactly the thickness or length or chunk, you know, whatever it is that, um, that you need at that time. But yeah, scarves are great. <clears throat> um, okay, so so the other thing that we whoops, what do we got here? Got a hanger on her. Um, the other thing that I did here was put a bead at the end of the sari silk. This is a wooden bead, so it's really lightweight. It's really large. I like it. I like the large. <clears throat> so now you have the option of doing that. And if I wrap it around twice, geez, that's almost just barely long enough. Anyway, I found that if I stick it underneath and then bring it up and hang it over, that it hangs pretty nicely there. But that could use a bead or a couple beads. Um, Let's see, do I have, so now this is kind of um, wine or cranberry maroon color, which I thought would go really nicely with this back here, and it does, but on the front, now we've got purple and blue. Flowers and dragonflies, so, <clears throat> I've got some things here I can take apart. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. There's a blue heart, a blue glass heart, and it's got some copper inside of it. Oh, that copper would be pretty with that. Um, what other beads do I have here? This is purple and pink. How do purple beads look on this wine color? Maybe not so much. The pink? The pink doesn't look bad at all. There's only one pink bead on there. I must have used the other one. Okay. Oh, 
there's a blue one of the same. How does blue look on wine? Mm, that bright blue. Maybe a little off. Maybe the other pink one's in here. Let's see. What is that? I can't tell if that's black or blue. The blue, it's kind of small. Most of those beads are kind of small there. <clears throat> Could always do something like this too. This is a plastic leaf and it's got a little jump ring on it. You can always put that on the end. So, oh, look, at, here's a, there's a, a bronze, vintage bronze um, pine cone with a, loop on the end. I could use that. Tiny little cup here. Oh, there's so much stuff in it. It's amazing. Could do that. Could tie that. That um, It's kind of heavy, but it would hang down. Um, I do like the pink on there, but well, maybe the pink and blue. <clears throat> I don't think the purple is great on there. Or the red. Oh, I don't want to go grab those other. Let's see if there's any beads in here. So what are you guys doing? Are you putting a bead on the end? Oh, wait a minute. How come Glennis isn't up here? Let's. There we go. Glennis, did you put a bead on? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be putting a bead on. Okay. I've got the back cover finished, and I've got the front cover finished. Cool. Oh, I like that. Yeah, put it up. Um, and I'm going to put a bead on my lace. I've got a lace away. here that I dyed. Move it away from I... you just a little bit. Move it away from you just a little bit Pardon? so they can see it a little bit better. Just push it. Yep. Perfect. That's pretty. I like that. Yeah, and then this is the, the back. I just oh, did cool. a little bit of a collage. Nice, nice. With a number. Well, yeah. <laughs> because there's going to be numbers in it. That's smart. It'll remind you there's numbers in it. Well, I almost just—I was thinking of putting ABC on the front, and I thought, no, I like these are the butterflies from that my new butterfly punch that are three D. Yeah. So I wanted to yeah. put those on. Um. I just saw this in my in my jar. <clears throat> so I'm calling mine finished, except for the bead. I have to get that's on the other side of the room, so I'll probably do that later. Dropping that on the floor. So <laughs> there's a little <clears throat> punched out piece that I could use to put a word right here. Over there. No, over here is better. And then I just found this word sitting in my jar. <laughs> oh, that, I, that I'm so glad you went with that dragonfly. It's so good. You like it? Do you like yes. the word? <laughs> Poor <Portia. laughs> Oh dear. Kind of makes me think of depends. Ah, that's hilarious. I'm uh, older than you. Oh, yeah, but still. <laughs> um, let's see. Handsome, rugged. Got some words in the whole thing. Outrageous. <laughs> I kind of want a word there, so I'm kind of hoping there would be a word that would be no way. <laughs> I like out, out, outrageous. You like outrageous? Yeah. That would. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not the only one. Julie agrees with me, and so does Margie. <laughs> Poised panty liners. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. Okay. Outrageous is really brown with black writing. No. Um, it is kind of brown. I'm going to see what else is in this jar here. 
<clears throat> there's buttons, but they're all little tiny. There needs to be a big button. I probably need to get into my other big button, not button, bead, into my big bead um, container and find the right button, right uh, size. Okay, let's see. I got one other. Oops, I dropped one on the floor. Okay. I just can't hang on to that one. I'm going to see if there's any in this tray right here. Oh, there's some cute things. Oh. Or maybe a word. Maybe a word that you could use. That would be good, huh? Um, Debbie, did you get yours finished? Candy, how are you doing? <clears throat> Is everybody done? Candy fell asleep on her desk, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, mine, it's, it's pretty scruffy, but it's it's done. Oh, I like yours. It's perfect. Oh, here's a couple words, maybe. Let's see what we've got there. Oh, not words, just little papers to put words on. I can always tear you can a use a little number. I can always tear a word out of a book. Yep. And, uh, oh, Derby just added two more pages. Yeah. Gladden for punishment, Derby. <laughs> That's Thank two you. more. It's a lot more pages of, of the... Uh, yeah, the melon or acetate. Yeah. But if you're going to do it, make it big enough to be usable for you, you know. Just as well make it usable. <clears throat> um... Okay, here's some. Um... Christy, looking, I'm um, talking about scarves. I like using scarves to make um, fabric envelopes out of. And I, I I do a lot of swaps and I like sending them in fabric envelopes. And I just open up an envelope and uh, fabric glue a scarf all around the edges and you know everywhere and cut it out to fit and then refold it up. And I find the scarves are great for that. Cool, that's a good idea. This is the little, just the little lace that I was thinking about to put on here. Just a small, a thin, I don't know, I probably would have put the dragonfly on top of it, but, but I don't know. That's, I don't like that now on the opening, but maybe, maybe over here. Or across the bottom where the grass is? Oh, well, yeah, maybe even going up. Like that. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe it just doesn't need it. Maybe lace just didn't fit. I like it at the bottom there. Do you like it at the bottom? Um, the other thing, well, I don't want to cover the cover the vellum. Put it on here. What do you guys think? Lace, no lace? So far. Marjorie <laughs> says too much. So far, yeah, it's, I'm, it's not impressing me. <clears throat> In my mind, I thought this is small enough lace that it might. Julie work, says too much. But I think it's it overdoes it. <clears throat> I feel like it needs a word or something here to kind of balance it out, but the lace was too much. I don't like it. you have any Tim Holt words? <clears throat> I do. I actually, um, where did I put those? I had a whole uh, couple of books of them that I was just going through to find some things. I think I left them sitting out on the table, but I might have another one. I've got a whole drawer of words here. <laughs> 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 
and not like I don't have enough books to, you know. Okay, so what kind of word would we want? Those are too big. I got one for you tomorrow, Candy. There's a word for you tomorrow. Are we there yet? <laughs> um, man, I got yeah, beauty's good. Frogs. Oh, good. Julie refreshed it. All right, so I've got occasions. We could look through. Look at these letters. These are really cute. They have mustaches on them. Can you see them yet? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. Mustache on the letters. <clears throat> oh, no. Cute, huh? Okay, let's see. Um, I have lots of numbers, some Tim Holtz numbers. Yeah, Margie. <laughs> That's not a, what'd she say? <clears throat> I mustache you a word. A mustache. I must ask you a question. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. That is a good one. <clears throat> Beauty would be a good word. Um, okay, let's see. There's all the months. There's letters. There's Scrabble letter kind of things. All right, what is this? Congrats, this day life is good. Celebrate, best wishes. No. Um, <clears throat> like picture perfect, Should put picture perfect down there in that little banner, put the banner right across the, right across the, the bottom of the flower. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I do think beauty would be <clears throat> a pretty word or something similar. Another Tim Holtz book. This one is called Small Talk. I think it needs to have a white background. Attitude is everything. Practice kindness. That's a good one. Here's some words. Um, heart's desire. Making a wish. Laugh, excitement. Looking good. Some of those would work, wouldn't they? <clears throat> um, here's one that says, let it go. <clears throat> Here's another one that says, use your wings. What about that? Use your wings. Tim Holtz, big chat. Cat is a good word. <laughs> this one's called small talk. Oh, no, wait. They're all called small talk. Um, well, it's small talk. And that one, small talk occasions. They're different. Oh, we lost Glennis. That's we lost her completely. Um, okay, what do you, what do you think of use your wings, like for the dragonfly? There she is. It, whoops, there she is. But she's muted herself. <laughs> I do like use your wings. <clears throat> And, Glennis, you'll have to unmute yourself if you want to speak. I do like that little purple, this guy. Now it seems kind of big, doesn't it? Oh, 
forgot I was muted again. Yep. <laughs> oh, you couldn't you hear me? I could hear you, but I didn't know you couldn't hear me. And I was yeah. saying that that Julie agreed and Margie agreed and you didn't hear me saying Glennis, you gotta unmute yourself if you want to talk. <laughs> yeah, that's when that's when I I, oh, that's I when realized. I, yeah, realized it. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise I would have just kept talking to myself. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I've done it. I think with the dragonfly, that's perfect. Yeah, use your wings. Let's see where to put it. That's too far. Partly on the green stem over there. Nope. It's got to be on this side, but partly on the green stem. Right? Yeah. There we go. I like it. I like it. I'm going to call yeah. that complete other than the bead. Actually, this, I have more. Julie's of saying on an angle. This, but what? Julie's on a, saying on an angle. On an angle. What? Too late. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. Oh, Debbie, going to finish yours tomorrow. When you finish it, post a picture in the group, please. So we can see everybody's. I, I love seeing how we're doing the same thing, but they're all so very different. That would be awesome. Thanks for being here, Debbie. I will talk with you soon. Sleep well. Right, Debbie. Sleep well, sleep more than three hours, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Good night. Um, yeah, all this needs is a bead. And actually, I think that this big pink wooden bead would work on here just fine, too. And so maybe. Yeah, big would go with that. I have a couple more of these, I think. I might get one, tie a knot, put one right here and put one up here with the knot in between them too, because that is kind of a long, I can, I can cut it off too. Let's see if it goes around once, twice, because then it gives enough room for um, expansion. Um, well, that might end up being just right by the time I tie a knot. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just have to get one of those out tomorrow. Or I could take that one off. <laughs> I'll get one out tomorrow because I'll take the picture tomorrow and put it in the, put it in the group. <clears throat> but it's nice I to put my alphabet in before I take my picture. Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll be cool. All right. And now I know I'll use them so much more. I love yeah. making words out of them. Yeah. But now when you can find your letters, <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's so much easier. Yeah. We can expect all kind of words from Glynis. <laughs> we have found that if we wrap it around and then I put it underneath and over the top that it hangs better. All of them seem to seem to do that. So let's see. There's, there's the front. All right. Yeah, I love the colors on the one you did tonight. This one here? Yeah. I like yeah, the how that it turned out. Interesting. I put a paper pocket on the back there. I do like the I do like the colors of the cover, yeah. That'll that'll turn out just fine okay yeah i can't wait to see everybody's completed that'll be cool <clears throat> all right oh i got a few more orders to get packed and get out um i get them ready tonight and run them out to the post office first thing tomorrow and then if it's not midnight yet maybe i start on this room huh the studio <laughs> It's only 10 30. This the studio store. <laughs> I need to get yeah. I need to get um You have a good time, Candy. Oh yeah. And be safe. Be safe traveling to Illinois. I don't know exactly In how winter. long it is, but yeah, you gotta get back. 
finish it up later and and um, post the picture then. But yeah, be safe. At least he's sleeping. If he's going to drive, right? So you may fall asleep reading a book, but that's okay. Okay. Good night. Have a safe trip. Um, well, I think it probably wouldn't hurt me to maybe hit the hay a little bit early tonight. <laughs> I was a wee bit late last night. <laughs> Still didn't get a whole lot of sleep. But, uh, considering I haven't been feeling too great, probably would do me some good. I'll finish my cold cocoa first, Margie. <laughs> yeah, it's in a metal mug and it is cold but at least it kept it nice and cold <laughs> now it just tastes like cold chocolate milk oh you <sighs> oh, think um <laughs> he's getting packed now yeah I do that the night before, just throw in a bag what we need. We're only going to be there a couple days. So, <laughs> all right, guys, let's uh, let's all go get a little bit of sleep. And <clears throat> today's Saturday, right? So tomorrow's oh, God, I hope so. I'm still totally off. I don't know why. It just doesn't feel like Saturday. That's weird. Um, But I will... I will find a time next week that we can do a craft along. We'll have our, um, I think we can do probably do Friday night and um, Friday night will be New Year's Day. <clears throat> and then Saturday, our, our uh, Saturday night live. The only reason I probably wouldn't do Friday is if I get this room completely torn apart and feel like I really need that time. But then, you know, I could go live with you. One of you could be making something and I could just be in the background here talking with you while I'm putting the room together, right? <laughs> could do that. Why not? Um, yeah. Uh, boy, I'm looking around at stuff and whew. <laughs> Oh, when but you, when it's all finished, you're going to love it. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> how many times have I done this? <laughs> I, I really need But this to, is different this time. This is going to be different. It is different. And you're, I have you're making been, two different rooms. Yeah. Two rooms out of one for two purposes instead of having them all. They've all been blended together. And so things for both purposes are on both sides of the room. And I, that's why I have a hard time finding some things. But I am looking around and thinking about things that I still need to purge. Um, I'm, uh, I do have a couple happy mails that I'm going to send out with some things that I know people would could use before I can get around to using them. Um, <clears throat> and some boxes of things that will be set up to go in January. We might have a January clearance to finish out the December stuff we never got to. Oh, good. Uh, that means hot guys. <laughs> oh Gigi said that her mom won't join us on on lives because Gigi told her about the hot guys in a kilt joke. <laughs> oh really yeah and, did you, and the kilts too <laughs> yeah, a kilt joke and and her mom you know was a little conservative and that was oh, no. little, and I said well Tell her she can join us tonight because we're crafting. It's not a sale, so we don't have hot guys. Hot guys. It's at craft nights. <laughs> no, nope, not on craft night. Till Glenn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Margie hadn't, so I had to. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I said, well, you can tell her that the hot guys were like a December special because we were having clearance, and you know oh, we don't. No. Have many all the time we'll have them now and then but we don't have that many all the time so she doesn't need to worry about it <laughs> oh that sounds so funny in the context of hot guys uh, yeah it does and it's yeah it's, well and hot guys just is, doesn't sound like any big deal because we know the whole joke behind it you know <laughs> but I guess if somebody just heard hot guys they would think what are you ladies doing <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> We're just having fun. 
And yeah. no, we're, not, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> all, it's all in fun. And all of our hot guys are laughing about it too. So I don't think mine understands it. I think he's more confused <laughs> than laughing. More confused than, than understanding. That's funny. Well, tell him <laughs> if you put a kilt on, you'll get it. And I'll take a picture of it. I'll turn my camera around to you and show the ladies my hot guy in a kilt. <laughs> oh, I would love to. I love his legs. He's got lovely. Some guys have skinny little legs. He's got yeah. very nice legs. Oh, cool. <laughs> Even after 40 years. Wow. That's because he's busy doing all the housework. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so you're smart. You're going up and down the stairs a million times a day. I don't go up and down them at all. You keep him in shape by having him do all the work, right? Yeah, it works. That was smart, Glennis. That was very <laughs> smart. Oh, man. Well, yeah, you did come up with a couple of good things there. Oh. Oh, boy. I need the... I need the organization fairy, the clutter fairy. I can go and organize somebody else's so easy, but I look at mine and I'm like, oh, where do I even start? <laughs> where I started. You need the, to get some sleep. I do need to get some sleep. That's probably where I start, huh? Yeah. I'll get it tomorrow and I'll finish the orders and then and I'll do those hopefully quickly because I'll want to get in here and get to work on this. Get to work on uh, getting things all set up for the new year. <clears throat> Yeah, got to work on a schedule and um, to make sure we can get tutorials in and craft alongs and sales. And I just need to have a better um, better schedule for everything. And the game once a month? Uh, yep, we, the game once a month on Saturday night. Yeah, so what will, you know, we started Saturday nights out like this and then we were focusing on other things and they kind of got left um, with not so much focus, but we started Saturday nights out that everyone was specifically making something and maybe we were making, you know, X, Y, Z and Sharon and I would each do it and you'd see how we would do it differently. So we're going to go back to that where, where we are actually making something on Saturday night. So you can see how we do it differently. Or one of us will teach the tutorial and the other one will do it along with everybody else. That way we- could have Sharon back. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. She's doing great. She's doing great. She spent a really nice Christmas with her family. And- um, Yeah, she sounds ate, happy. Ate a bunch of food. <laughs> yeah, she's happy. She's doing good. Things are things are, are all looking, looking good at this point. So other than her knee, and she is scheduled for surgery, I think January 15th is the date. Oh, that soon, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's because somebody canceled. <laughs> ah, so well, that's good then. Yeah, really. Um, she will probably, possibly, most likely um be here for um Saturday night live, if not the second of January, then the ninth, right before her surgery. So we'll at least get her okay. one night. Um <clears throat> Yeah, one night before her surgery. And then I don't think it'll be a super long recovery and it'll be great because she'll be out of pain and she'll be able to be a little more creative and feel like herself again. Well, so that'll, that'll help a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but if things work, maybe we can get her on the second and the ninth. That'll be great to have two. Yeah. And uh, maybe we do a tutorial on one and tell us what to do on the other because it's been a while since she's been told what to do. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't. <laughs> It's been a while. She's not had as many of those. So I think it's her turn. <laughs> kind of agree with you. I do really like, though, how we choose the letter and the numbers because the letter tells us what to make and then the the numbers tells us what to use. Because then instead of thinking, oh, well, what should I make? What should I make? It, you already tell us what we have to make. And Yeah, I think that was good. Yeah, to me, that's easier because you're telling me what to make. And now I just have to figure out a way to make it work. So I like that. <clears throat> I like that. That's a fun game. It's, it is with you guys because you guys are just all fun about it. So. 
We're all happy. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, I'm going to go to bed. That'll be fun. Thanks for being here, Margie, Laurie, Laura, uh, Julie, and Nettie. Yeah, we miss Sharon here. She'll be back. She'll be here. She's doing great. Um, but, you know, no reason to try to to get her all organized in, in today when she had family there and, and um, you know, just enjoying Christmas and then today trying to clean up. <laughs> so... The one thing that we didn't do was cook a ton of food and overeat. <laughs> kind of missed it. I kind of missed it, but then I kind of didn't. So, you know what I mean? It will be good. I to had have a hot it. turkey sandwich for supper tonight. It was wonderful. Oh, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. I do like hot turkey sandwich with maybe a little bit of mozzarella or Swiss melted on it. <laughs> Oh, I had some stuffing on it and some cranberries on it and oh, lots yum. of gravy. Oh, yum. That's even better. <laughs> stuffing is my favorite part. <sighs> so I'll be talking to Sharon. I'll tell her that you miss her and that, it, that you're um, looking forward to her return. Okay. And um, yeah, we hope she can come on the second and get us back in the groove. <laughs> Daddy's getting hungry. <laughs> so on the night, can tell her what to do. <laughs> Who's getting hungry? Nettie. Oh, yeah, Nettie. Me too. Me too, Nettie. I am. But it's not true. Nettie, I'll whisper so that, that Margie doesn't hear, or Marianne doesn't hear, but my husband brought me a bowl of mini uh, cream puffs a minute ago. What? <laughs> Chocolate covered. Chocolate covered mini cream puffs? Mm -hmm. Oh my. They were real good. Glennis? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll never starve with this man. No, you won't. Poppycock. I would just be happy with the poppycock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he's a did I mention man. a bag of pistachios too? Uh, yes, you did. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought I, I might have forgotten those. No, I love pistachios. I was just trying to ignore them because I love them. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh. oh. They're Doug's favorite nut too. Yeah, that does sound I, good. I never started eating them until I was like in my 40s and else uh, then I discovered them. And oh, man, I love them. Aren't they? They really are good. Mm -hmm. All right. I got to hang this back up on a hook. This, oh, look, those three colors do look really nice together. They make a nice little thing. <laughs> yeah, oh. they do. Um, you can make your on your way to a tassel. Yeah, really. Add a few things into that. All right, guys. Let's all go. Let's all go to the kitchen. Let's all <laughs> go to the kitchen. Let's all go to the kitchen. Let's all go to the kitchen and see what we can see. <laughs> I guarantee there are no chocolate covered cream puffs in my kitchen or pistachios. <laughs> Or sandwich, I haven't opened the pistachios yet. Oh man, I got so much stuff here now. He's brought, I've got all this food he's brought me. Uh, Nettie's like, just stop, just stop already. <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's why I whispered to her so you wouldn't hear. <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah, it's all <laughs> <in> the kitchen. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah sleep thanks for being here i love spending the evening with you oh chocolate coated peanuts are good julie what oh, chocolate coated peanuts those are awesome i like chocolate covered raisins too i don't like raisins by themselves but i like chocolate covered raisins <laughs> Best is chocolate covered anything uh yeah chocolate covered coconut <laughs> oh my gosh all right i gotta stop i don't even have any chocolate in the house <laughs> I'm going to do a Nutella and banana sandwich. That's about as close as I can get. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's a good I combination. Do. I do love those. Okay. Yeah. Don't forget to take pictures of your um, creations tonight and put them into the group so everybody can see them. And um, love y'all. And I'll see you in the group tomorrow. And uh, we'll get together next week for sure. Okay. Everybody. Okay, good night, everybody. I get a good Have night. Have a good New Year. Take care of yourself. And we'll see.